It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Thorat's here. Mary Jo Foley's here. We're going to talk about Windows 10. Uh, we're getting close to 20H2 already. It feels like we just got 2004. Speaking of which, Surface laptops and other Surface devices still don't have the latest Windows update. Why is that? Microsoft has also spun off their creepy chatbot. We'll find out all about that and a whole lot more next on Windows Weekly. Windows Weekly comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Stay in control when it comes to your company's access points and authentication. LastPass makes security simple for your remote workforce. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is twit. twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Mary Jo Foley. Episode 681. Recorded Wednesday, July 15th, 2020. Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by LastPass. Give your IT department a break and supply them with the tools that really protect your business. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. And by Roman. Skip the waiting room and awkward face-to-face. -face. Get ED medication conveniently delivered to your door in discreet, unmarked packaging. Go to GetRoman.com slash Windows for a free online visit and free two-day shipping. It's time for Windows Weekly, ladies and gentlemen, from the beautiful Land O'Lakes <laughs> in Lower McCungie <laughs> Township. It's Mr. Paul Thorat of Thorat.com. Hello, Paul. Hello, Leo. Sitting to his left, the talented Mary Jo Foley. She does it all in Notepad at allaboutmicrosoft.com. And together they hmm. form the dynamic duo of Microsoft Reportage. And they're here to do I'm sorry, what the, what now? Reportage. <laughs> Portage? Reportage. Is that, like a kind of, is that a soup? What if you talking? say Report it in <laughs> French, it's Oh, pot potage. potage. Not, not repotage. <laughs> That's reused soup. <laughs> repotage. What are we having for dinner tonight? Repotage. 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 <laughs> Same repotage as last night. Exactly. Uh, we're just pretending we're in Paris, but we're not. We're in, uh, we're in the States because no one will let us in. Yep. Nope. Mm -mm. So we're stuck. Kind of had it coming. Kind of did. I don't blame them. Man, I can't even get to New York State anymore. No, can't, you can't. <laughs> I can't even get to you. I can't even visit you. Nope. Without having to live in a dome. No, you for have to fill out days. that form. Yeah. The and form. if you don't, two thousand dollar fine. Can you believe that? Yikes. Wow. It's good. It's How good. How do they? Can't you just drive into New York? Though? I know. I mean, I, yeah, you can. What are they? Yeah, you can. Roadblocks across all the roads. No. Papers, no. papers, so, please. <laughs> I know. It's not really enforceable, but it does. You know. They're making a point. It's a point. They're making a point. So I think uh, that point is suck it, Florida. <laughs> yeah, right. That's really <laughs> it. I'm pretty sure that's yeah. but I'm a snowbird. There um, seems to be a strange cross state rivalry going on here. Well, we have so many people who have relatives or have spent time in Florida from New York, so Everybody does, thing. doesn't it? Does don't they? Yeah, it's the law. Especially if you live here. in the Northeast, you yeah. have to go to Florida. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. do. It's like our version of uh, what was that science? Logan's Run. <laughs> when you're 30, <laughs> you, know, you, you go to Florida. You reach a certain age and yeah. you pop, and then you you wake up in Florida. <laughs> uh, by that by that uh, measure, I should be there right now. <laughs> All right, let's talk uh, about uh, Windows 10. Amazingly enough. What's, no, the we have to? Oh <laughs> What's the latest? What's the latest? By the way, uh, there's some problem, isn't there? I hope so. Is when isn't there? Come on. When isn't there? Okay. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, we'll get, get to there. that. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's start with the good news. The, the good news. Where, is, where do we put that story? Um, <laughs> is there good news in here? There must be good What's news. What's a CU? Uh, cumulative. Hello. Cumulative update. Cumulative update. <laughs> a quality update, as we and say. And there is yeah. a huge CU right now coming out. For a version of Windows that doesn't exist yet. For 20H2. Yeah. That means we've hit a, an important milestone, Leo. Wait a because minute. Because 
I'm confused. Right. Isn't 20 of, oh, 20 H2 is this fall. Okay. Yes. Yep. We're practically there. Yep. Yeah. So we went through this process last, late last year and early this year with 20 H, sorry, we call it 2004 because God forbid. Um, yep. This is the first one. I think they, I think they did the first one for 2004 in December of last year, if I remember correctly, but I could be off. Um, the fact that they labeled oh, this a, a CU rather than saying it's a just a new build, I think, is telling. Mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. You know, they surprise us. They could throw in some new features still, I guess. But this indicates they're they're just patching it now. Yeah. I mean, we've we, as we've brought up on the show many times, the new normal for Windows is they build the 20 H, the H2 builds in the first mm -hmm. half of the calendar year, right? So as of June, it should be done. Done, you know, in air quotes. But they've already yep. started working now on the next build, which they build between July and December. And that's what's going to be 21 H1. So yeah, it should, it, if they're on their schedule, it should be done. And just updatable with fixes and patches, cumulative updates, and that's it. It makes sense, was, right? We think it's going to be a mi very minor update to 2004 when it comes out. It'll it'll look like a service pack. Well, yeah, but, but uh, last fun. year, if you had said, hey, 1909 is a really small update to 1903, but here are the three new features new we features. know about. Whatever yeah. They are. Do we know mm -hmm. of any new features in 20H2? I know. It's hard to remember back to 20H2 now, right? <laughs> like when they right. were doing it. Um, you mean 1909? Yeah. No, no yeah. in other words, oh, I'm 20 sorry, sorry. H2. Let, yeah. Let's let's step like back. We, right. So yeah. So when we started writing about 20 H2, I'm mm -hmm. trying to find my original post when we said this. Um, so yeah, was this? <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. I'm like, were there any? No, features? no. This is um, this is what it's like. It's just. I know. Were there any features? At all. It's got to be something, you know. <laughs> I know. There has to be something. Well, it's kind of so hard that, to go back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. this thing that has nothing in it is almost done. <laughs> so whatever it is. Yeah. And you won't get it until September or October at the very earliest. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. Although we have to point out many mm -hmm. people still do not have 2004. So that came out. Starting May 27th, I believe that's when the rollout started, and here we are, July 15th, and still many people, including me, do not have it. So, um, right, yeah, <laughs> right. Maybe some people, yeah, so like who are normals, will wait, mm -hmm. just wait for the second half build at this point, and just say, you know what, we're almost at the fall time frame now, so why not just wait? Right, right. Maybe. Yes, and and I don't know that we have a story about this explicitly, but for Tuesday was Patch Tuesday. Yeah. And the, I believe there was a record number of patches. We've 123? Yeah, some crazy I number. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think we have this in the notes, but this is just ha happening. Apparently, my one of the updates has broken the desktop version of Outlook, so you can look forward to that. Um, it's been a good year all around, I would say. Uh, yeah. I must start yeah. to be like New York State and ban Windows users from calling my radio show. I know. Right. Do you? Get, I was going to ask you if you get are Non-stop. getting a lot of calls about 2004 um, or no? Not a lot about 2004 specifically, but yeah. enough calls uh, from people with things that don't work. Yeah. It is rather astonishing. And the problem that is that you like can't really ask work. somebody, a normal person, oh, well, do you have 2004? Yeah. They say, what do you mean? They don't know. They don't yeah. Know. Yeah, I know. you just be like, all right, open up Red Jet. It. I don't want to do that. I don't. I don't <laughs> not on the radio. I don't even want to say, okay, hit you know Windows key uh, X, go to system property. I don't even want to say that. I just, yeah. I just have to yeah. pretend that whatever is going on with them is normal, yeah. which it is. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have a separate story later about service. Uh, PCs specifically, but one of the things that's really strange about 2004 is devices of a certain type, kind of like people of a certain age, um, 
yeah. some people are getting it and some aren't, you know, and clearly yeah. there's some kind of a software configuration or a hardware peripheral somewhere that is triggering a block. But, you know, of course, Windows is smart enough to tell you that you're not getting an update that you wouldn't have known about otherwise, but it's not smart enough to tell you why, even mm -hmm. though it probably knows why, you know. Right. A lot of yeah, people think some from dock or unplug the USB cable or something or whatever it is would probably just get it. I've heard stories of yeah, people so who wild. uninstalled <laughs> OneDrive oh. and then it came yes, down. What? Too. I've heard a lot of that. What? Yep. I know. I yeah. know. It doesn't make uninstall sense. OneDrive and then you get the update and then reinstall OneDrive. What? Yeah. I know. That's not an official workaround, but people have been doing it. And, and it all, works. all of this supports the notion uh, that I've had for many years, which is that computer science is not science. It's black magic. <laughs> and um, it doesn't work logically, despite the ones and zeros. Sigh. It's really strange. Sigh. Great. All right. That's well, what I need over my head is that Charlie yeah. Brown black cloud thing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, <laughs> well, he misses the football and is laying on his back. <laughs> well. Um, I don't know. Where do you want to go from here? <laughs> Should we go, rename well, this show something no, else? <laughs> no, let's talk about 2004. Because, oh, okay. Um, yeah. there, so Microsoft does have a page, um, mm -hmm. which, again, you wouldn't send normals to this page probably, but it's in their documentation, known issues and updates for each version of Windows. And so they always are updating this page. Right now they're updating it for 2004. So if you go to the page... Um, it's called Release Information, and then you can see 2004. Um, there's a list of things they're investigating that they've resolved, and there's always new things being added, yay, um, that are problematic with the update. So if you look at the page right now, there are many things that are resolved uh, that were previously yep. problems. But there are right? also like, many things that are not resolved. They're being added, yeah, I know. Like there's a new one that, was added yesterday, it looks like. Dragging the mouse in some apps may, ca may cause issues for some IME yeah. users. That's Guys, new. Guys, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Stop using the mouse. Come on. Exactly. It's Windows. Yep. There's a lot of... Uh, that there's kind still of abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Third-party driver issues still uh, there. Variable yeah. refresh rate not working with Intel iGPU still there. Investigating since May 28th. Investigating. Um, difficulty connecting to more than one Bluetooth device, still investigating that. That's been there since May 27th. The Connexent audio drivers, still investigating those. So, th yeah, there, there's still a lot of problems with 2004 that they're trying to some, squash. Some of them go back months. <laughs> they do. Only two months. They do go back months. I know. So everybody who's complaining to me daily on Twitter, I don't have 2004 yet. I always say, you know what? That might be a good thing, because if you look at this list, there's still a lot of things that people are encountering and having problems with. So unless there's really a reason you are super anxious to get it, I would not advise you to do a workaround to get it. Don't be uninstalling OneDrive and reinstalling it or downloading the software um, and going you know, around. Back Windows in our update. younger days, two months ago, if you would ask us, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We thought nothing was going to be wrong. Do you yeah. remember that? There'd be no problems. <laughs> so maybe in the we future, <laughs> yes, when Leo asks, you know, should people install this? We're just going to say no comment. <laughs> we have no comment. Yeah. We have nothing to share, Microsoft's favorite. <laughs> we have nothing to share at this time. That's it. That's beautiful. Yeah. There you go. That's a good That's response. <laughs> we have nothing to share. We have nothing time. to share. We have nothing additional to share at this time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I, I, I'm not seeking it anymore. I'm just kind of saying, okay, people ask me, do you have it? I don't. Okay. But I'm not looking for it. I'm not going to go out and look for it. Yeah. Well, in other news, uh, Microsoft <laughs> has released a fast ringer, as we now call it, a dev channel build and a, a wonderfully disjointed blog post from the Windows Insider teams. Uh, yeah. This team. was Good a job odd. on that one, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's not a lot going on here. I mean, in fact, there's been several builds where there really hasn't been anything at all. But uh, there is a new uh, settings icon, guys. So maybe that should have yeah. been the top story. <laughs> you buried the lead again. 
I know we did. Know. Okay, so look at the settings icon. Does it look different to you? Is it well, yes. Below? Here. It does. Actually, it looks yeah, so. Oh, yeah. Okay, um, very. I'm looking at it. Okay. <laughs> Really? So there's fewer little pins on the gear. Is that what it is? Incredible. Um, I'm, I'm just asking. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. The, oh, the, there it is. The yeah. settings icon, I think literally since Windows 8, has just been white on whatever color. Or if you're using a light theme, uh, black. So now it's got colors. If you use the Microsoft Launcher, you may recognize that icon. It looks a lot like the settings icon you know, on their Android thing. Yeah. But of course, it resembles the new icon style that they have for Windows 10, which will be obsolete in about 10 days because it already looks old fashioned. But uh, there it is. It matches the other things they're doing. Yeah. I don't know if that yeah. merits an exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like maybe two or three would have been better. Yeah. Well, uh, when, there, when the other new feature that's in today's build is a tweak to the sound setting experience, maybe it does merit an exclamation point. <laughs> right. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if it's obvious, but we're looking for some good news here. And <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. There you go. Do I, I, know. So, do I want it? <laughs> So, okay, also, may I ask about this? Why are they so using a phone post? to show the... Yeah, right. so, so this this is, I, I mentioned disjointed, right? So <laughs> this blog post is so... This is an this is a great example of why they need new writers over there. It's This is horrible. It's what's new in, in this new build for Windows 10. And then there's, like, other updates. Oh, there's a new launcher that's for Android. <laughs> Has nothing to oh. do with Windows. And oh. then you scroll down further, and they're like, hey, let's talk more about Windows. <laughs> Here's some stuff about search. That's very It's not confusing. necessarily for the latest. I know. It's unbelievable. It's like. No, can I? I was going to ask you about the search. So I looked at the search. It says we've improved the search experience in Windows 10. Um, I already have this experience on 1909. Like it looks exactly like that already. It does. And then I read in the blog post that if you have 1809 or higher, you have this or it's rolling out to people who have 1809 or higher. So I think yeah, I already so have this. You do. Yeah? So the issue, like I said, is poor, poor writing. They don't okay. explain that. See, this is a blog post about a new build of Windows 10. You think this must be about the thing in the title. And this topic is not about that thing in the title. This is just Windows 10 generally. It has nothing to do with the Insider program. It has okay. nothing to do with the fast, I'm sorry, the uh, dev channel. It has nothing to do with this build. They're just saying, okay. we recently unveiled two improvements to the search bar on Windows. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, you do have this. You already have it. Okay. I, I'm like looking at it. You know how I can't see UI changes and I'm looking at my search bar and the one in the yep. blog post. I'm like, so I think, I think it looks the same, but maybe I'm missing yep. something. Oh, no, you're no. right. This okay. time you're right. Okay. I'm right for yep. once. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So the, the, the difference, if you don't have this, is it's supposed to be a dual column experience when you, when you go to the search uh, box, or right. if you yeah. click on and search, right? Really yes, yes, that's right. Yep. And so on the right side, this isn't even an update. This is server it's side. It's not, right? Well, no. So, they, I'm sorry, but sorry, guys. No, uh, it is an update. Um, no. What they meant by server side is it doesn't require you to install anything on the client. It comes down from yeah. the server, so it will just happen automatically. Like it's not a, there's not like a KB download or something. No. It's just. Yeah. And also, I should point out this settings icon thing has nothing to do with the Insider program. Right. Its position in the blog post <laughs> suggests that this is just, well, it, it actually it does say insiders will notice. We're, oh, no, no, it says in this build. So he's gone back again. <laughs> oh, yeah. these people are unbelievable. All right. Sorry. <laughs> the settings thing. This this post is, uh, it, this is a this classic example a of editing. everything that's wrong with this group. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's terrible. Well, this, it's the communication it. is terrible. It's really sad. Okay. It just, it bothers me so much. <laughs> I like the last paragraph. If you want a complete look at what build is in which insider ring, head over to the Flight Hub. Please note yeah. there will be a slight delay between when the build is flighted and when a Flight Hub is updated. That's almost yeah. Let me explain. That's let me explain verse. why it says that. That's beautiful. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> let me explain why that sentence is there. They used to just send the post with, "If you want a complete look at what build, you know, what build is in which ring, blah blah blah." Head over. It used to say what features are in it in each build. You click the link and you'd be like, "Hey, 
there's no the new build that you're just talking about is not in the flight yeah. hub. And they're like, oh yeah, that will happen in a couple of days. <laughs> and they're like, well then why did you provide the link? If it's not yeah. there now, we want to see what's there now. Well, now we know. And then now they say, well, there's a slight delay. <laughs> there's a slight delay between when a build is flighted I know. and I when know. a it's, flight it's, hub is updated. Classic. Now, also, I, I just saw this show up, too. Um, if you are waiting for last week's Dev Channel Fast Ring build to a 161, like you wanted to see the new start menu experience and all that other stuff, I saw Brandon LeBlanc tweet, most people in the insider program still don't have that. So, um, uh, was that one an AB <laughs> thing or not? I don't remember. Yeah, I it was an AB thing. Yeah, it was. Okay. So, okay. only some people got that new the new ti live tiles oh. and all that. Um, so, some people still don't change. have that. I see. Yeah, I, I did happen to get it, but that was the thing. It was so subtle. Like I said, I had to compare yeah. it with the other, you know, another computer to see what the differences were because it was very subtle. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this is, uh, this is why we have careers messy. <laughs> explaining this yeah. nonsense. Um, so yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. So anyway, whatever you're in, if you're in the former fast ring or the former slow ring, you got to build this week. So, uh, with some degree of nothing in it. So you can enjoy that. I'll take fixes and updates at this point. <laughs> Bob, Did I'll take anything. fixes for 200. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what. Yeah. I want, I My see, bar has been lowered. <laughs> I see that you have in your notes uh, mm -hmm. commentary on the, we talked a little bit about this yesterday on Mac Break Weekly. John Luiga, yeah. former Apple vice president for Europe's mm -hmm. column that says it's the end of the line for Wintel. And I want to give you a chance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to give you all the room in the world to talk about this. And I want to give Mary Jo time to get the gong. So I'm yes. going to do an <laughs> I'm going to do an ad here. Actually, I don't think it's going to be as bad as no, you like. No, no. In fact, I might be the one who needs to be gonged. I'm just saying that. Wow, okay. Because I See, agree. I would enjoy that quite a bit. I agree with Jean-Louis <laughs> Gasset. But first, oh, wow. okay. first a word from Last Pass. How about that for a tease, right? Stay tuned for the gong. But first a word about <laughs> LastPass. We use, we're in the LastPass studios here at Twit. We use LastPass at home. We use LastPass at work. We are all LastPass. All, we're a LastPass family. And you know who loves that? Well, our employees do and our IT department does. And that's because LastPass does something heretofore impossible. It improves security and convenience at the same time. Usually it's one or the other, right? More secure, less convenient. That's what I love about LastPass. Look, IT, and please, if you're not in IT, understand, IT today is, is tough. There's more devices. People bring in their own devices, right? Applications, much more varied. Used to be, yeah, you have a spreadsheet, you're happy. Now there's a lot more going on. You, you see all the stuff you got to deal with with Windows updates. This workforces are gone home, so you can't even, you know, go down the hall with your keys jingling on your belt and say, can, did you reboot it? You can't even do that. It's all remote. And now, and now, top it off with new threats, you know, from hackers who really say, oh, soft targets, regulations. Strong security is very tough these days. Fortunately, LastPass will help a lot. Giving your IT strong security, giving your employees something easy to use, giving your company something easy to manage. First of all, you're going to secure every entry point, and that's really important because your employees are going home with the keys to the kingdom, the bank account, the database, the customer records, everything. With LastPass, from shadow IT to apps to mobile and cloud services, LastPass's access solutions give you visibility and control over every access point to your organization. You need that. You know you need that. You also want to unify access and authentications because employees can access a lot of different applications and devices, which leads to a lack of visibility from of user activity between each. They're on the laptop now. They're on the desktop now. What are they doing now? LastPass Identity offers a simple integrated view across every access, every authentication task, so IT can see who's accessing what, when, and where. Awesome. You'll increase security without impacting productivity. In fact, employees love it. The single sign-on apps, they're fantastic. 
Employees say that's easy. That's that's secure. It's more secure. Yes. No, you can't leave your business exposed, but you also, if it's too hard to use, employees are are just going to bypass it. LastPass is authentication solutions and let you understand user behavior to adapt authentication based on the user, reducing friction and preventing threats. And of course, nobody does password security better than LastPass. It just goes well beyond that now with single sign-on, multi-factor authentication and a lot more. LastPass allows employees to do their work securely, whether they're in the office, whether they're working from home. They never store or send your master password. Your, device, your data is only decrypted on device, Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, doesn't matter, everywhere, every browser. And it's only at the device level. Anywhere else, it's AES 256-bit encrypted. It's impermeable. I think LastPass does everything right. And if you want to secure your business and give your IT department the tools they need to keep your business safe, you need LastPass. Visit LastPass.com slash twit to find out how they can help your business stay productive and secure no matter where your employees are working from. LastPass.com slash twit. Thank you, LastPass, for keeping this show on the air. Paul Therott, Mary Jo Foley. And now... It's time to talk about this article heralding the death of Wintel. <laughs> yep. And really, what John Mark Twain said. Yes. Great league. Everyone century. has an opinion. Yeah. Yours is wrong. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, this is pre you know predicated on the introduction of Apple Silicon and a move by Apple away yes. from Intel towards its own custom chips. Yeah, I, and by the way, uh, for those who are not familiar, Jean-Louis Gasset, uh, former Apple executive, I, I think he took over the Mac group after Steve Jobs left the company or Yeah, he was, 80, an Apple, like he was that. an Apple, uh, I think, VP of Europe and became Apple, I can't remember yeah. what his final title was, but yeah, he was he was there in the post-Jobs, in the Jobs Interregnum. Yep. And he uh, founded B Inc., the computer company that love. could have become the yep. basis for the next uh, Mac OS, but they bought Next instead and brought Steve Jobs back. Um, as long ago as then, that, so this would have been the mid to late 90s, um, this guy used to blog all the time. He would do this on B's website at the time, later on other places. I don't remember the exact history of it, but I've always been fascinated by him. I, I agree with his opinions a lot. I He's obviously an industry insider. I like him. I, I've always I liked him. I think he's him. great. He's, he's smart. He's yeah. fun. I think he's terrible. Oh. <laughs> Get the okay. gong for Mary Jo. What's up? I never What's read up? him because I'm always wondering, why do people who understand Microsoft care what a former Apple person Well, that's thinks? a good point. He did work at HP for a while. Oh, 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 I see. He's not. Um, he's not well, uh, this is a guy who has developed operating systems, right? I mean, this is... Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've always, I've just like, as in, I don't think of him as a mic. He's not a Microsoft expert or anything. I mean, he's just a industry guy. He's yeah. He's got a, a, a unique perspective. I agree. He's not necessarily, He's often been wrong. Yeah. Well. Uh, well. Okay. But I mean, <laughs> I don't think of it those terms. I mean, um, I think I told you guys the story. Mary Jo was there, but it was probably at. Uh, I almost said tech ed, you know, Ignite last year or maybe the year before, something like that. We were, Mary Joe and I had finished our thing up on the stage and had come down and some people were there and we were talking to them. And this guy said something to me sort of offhanded, like, well, you you said that Google would never buy YouTube. And I was <laughs> like, what? And he says, you said that Google would never buy YouTube. And I'm like, I, <laughs> like, what, I had no idea what he was talking about. I So I went and looked it up. And yeah, and sure enough, on Windows Weekly 2,000 years ago, there was a rumor that Google was going to buy YouTube, and I was like, I don't see that happening, and here's why. You know, and I kind of spell it why I didn't think it was going to happen. Obviously, Google bought YouTube. I, people harbor these grudges. I, I Like, I got that <laughs> wrong, and he's never forgotten it. And I, I like, to me, it's like, well, you were wrong about this, or you were wrong about this. Like, whatever. I, to me, this is like a decades of conversations, and I, I, I like this guy. I I enjoy his, uh, his blogs and, and whatever, and so... He had written one last week uh, called The Passing of Wintel, without a question mark. And um, I set it aside. I, uh, I subscribed to Medium. That's where he posts now. And so I, I bookmarked it. And I'm like, I, I want to spend some time and really look at this. And I kind of read through it. And I was like, uh, mm, not exactly. And and mm -hmm. I, 
I, I, and the part I took exception to, uh, and again, I'm not doing this to blast this guy. Like I said, I, I still find his opinion very interesting. I don't mean like this guy said that, you know, like, I don't mean it like that. I, I <laughs> but you know, the, the, I, I think people, and, and this, in this case, him, uh, fall, he falls into this kind of lose sight of some of the big picture stuff. You know, the reason that it makes sense for Apple to adopt its own chipset for the Mac is that, well, there's a bunch of reasons, but two of them are they can improve the products in tandem, right? So they, they can make the chips work better for the software and vice versa, which is cool. And, the, and, and, the and thing true. They talk and true. About, yeah. And true. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. no, I mean, I'm right. It is real. And the other very real thing is, well, they – that's cheaper for them to do this. I mean, they already own the chips. Like they, they, you know, it's cheaper for them to use their own stuff. It's actually, and and whether they pass those savings along to uh, customers is one thing that people are debating. Some people believe some next generation Macs will be less expensive in part because of this. Some people think Apple would never do that and uh, they'll keep their margins high. So and we, I, talked, whatever. we talked about that uh, yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think the consensus was. It, Apple actually doesn't look at whether it's cheaper or not. What they look at is what's going to be the, <laughs> the first premise, which is what's going to be the better product. Because they know okay. that that's a virtuous cycle. That if they make a better product, more people will buy it. They will make more money. They're not right. really, they don't care about cutting prices. They don't ever. look at the iPhone. That's <laughs> price doesn't drive them, I guess. What drives Except them the is price making the best. The first. Well, they're, they're <laughs> well. limits. They can't go too high. Admittedly, but they're not trying to get low. They're trying okay. to well, make the best I, possible product. Okay. Well, so I would just say I, both of those ideas have some merit. I, I don't well, have an definitely opinion. Definitely save on money. I mean, there's no qu well, question. Okay. Right? There you go. Yeah. So, so his his premise, part of his premise, because actually he made four or five different points about this and why this was so inevitable that ARM would take over the world and blah 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 whatever, um, is that like that kind of pricing model actually works against ARM in the PC space because the we already have a company, Intel, that makes a range of chips for the PC market, and it really hasn't had much competition for a lot of its lifetime. And so it has done this on its own. Like ARM can't come into what is for it a boutique market and lower prices. In fact, the opposite has occurred. Uh, if you look at the prices of mm -hmm. ARM-based PCs, they're incredibly expensive. Um, there's a, uh, the Lenovo Flex uh, 5G that I'm testing right now starts at, I think, $1,299. Um, the version with an Intel chip in it, and it's a core 10th generation quad core core processor. It's not like a low end thing, is I think $509. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, you know, this, that Apple could save money by using its own chips in its own volume platform absolutely makes sense that some version of ARM could come to the Windows PC space and trigger a price reduction is ludicrous. In fact, one of the biggest problems we've had in the PC market over the years, and, and Microsoft came out with Surface in part to correct this, was that PC makers had lowered the prices so much that PCs became kind of devalued. They became less, you know, um, uh, less good as products. They became netbooks. You know, they were racing to the bottom. Um, today the, you know, the sweet spot in the PC space is in the high hundreds, you know, the P, the sweet spot in the Mac space is in the mid 1500s or something like that. I mean, they're, they exist at different levels and I, I just, uh, there are things about ARM that are good for the PC that may, uh, influence Intel and AMD, uh, to do better, you know, the longevity stuff, the, uh, always on connectivity and so forth, but like pricing, that has absolutely not happened. It's it's it Plus, already happened. There was that sto there was that story today in at in right. a Reuters story saying ARM is raising their prices on chip technology, right? So yeah. it's already it starts out not low, and it's going to get higher. Yeah, I I, th I think the reality is that the PC market is this kind. It's a legacy product. We are really stuck on the Windows side with a compatibility problem that we can't get past. I mean, Microsoft right. refuses to leave behind any legacy uh, uh, software or any legacy technologies because it's business customers rely on stuff from the 1980s or 90s or whatever it is. They're, it's, they just can't do it. And that is a problem ARM does not solve, mm -hmm. you know? And so yeah. a Apple, by being more aggressive all along, has been able to move the Mac forward in ways that we just don't do on the PC side. And it moving to ARM can work. There's no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. It's not clear that Windows moving to ARM will ever work. And my experience, yeah. like I think we talked about this last week, my experience with a, 
a modern ARM-based PC has been very disappointing. Whereas I think the Mac is mm -hmm. going to be, I think it's going to succeed wildly. I think it's going to be mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Right. I, so. I, the whole premise of his argument was what Apple's doing is going to force Microsoft to do something with Windows 10 on ARM. I disagree completely. I don't think, yeah, I don't think right. it's going to force Microsoft to do that. I don't. They, they really kind of can't. I mean, you, you can't really get started on Windows 10 on ARM until they fix all of the problems. And the right. big two remaining, well, the big three remaining problems are performance and then uh, compatibility, specifically with X64 software, mm -hmm. um, which is a lot of it. And the, the final piece, and this is the real killer, is uh, driver compatibility. Mm -hmm. uh, the driver, mo you can't take an x86 driver and use it on a, an ARM PC. And until that is, that may never be possible, until there's some way to do that, I, these things, it's always going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, Apple, again, I, they're different. It's, I know that yeah. like a Mac and a windows PC are very similar, you know, they look <laughs> similar, they work similar, uh, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But Apple, by having this closed ecosystem, there are pros and yeah. cons, but some of the pros is that this kind of technology transition is if easier. I mean, it's not easy, but it's possible. Mm -hmm. And on the windows side, what you see, what we've seen, which is these little side projects where it's like, Hey, remember when windows NT used to be, uh, <laughs> cross compatible against multiple platforms. Yep. Yeah, nobody does that either, but it used to be and uh, now we're going to do that again. <laughs> yep. But all yep. they're doing is reintroducing all the same problems they had back then. The reason NT yep. turned into Windows turned into what we have today is because the performance wasn't there. And they were like, yep. well, we we wanted not to do Intel specific assembly language and optimizations, but now we're going to do that because we needed to work well. Now we're going to move the graphics into the kernel because it's the only way for the performance to be any good. Mm -hmm. And then it, instead of being this like secure cross-platform thing, it becomes this less secure, you know, uniplatform mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. which yeah. is what we have today. I, you know what I feel like is the disconnect here with Jean-Louis Gasset and other people who are big Apple advocates is yeah. when they say when they see Apple do something, they think – like an Apple user or an Apple advocate, yeah. but they don't think right. like a Windows person, right? And so Microsoft's worldview doesn't look anything like Apple's and it doesn't matter yeah. to them, right? Like they're they're going to keep using Intel and AMD. They're going to keep using those chips. That's what their customers are using. I mean, look at when they came out with this AMD-based Surface, how many people even wanted to try that, right? Like they're, it's just very ingrained if or, you're a Windows user, to be yeah. Intel. And it doesn't mean Microsoft loves Intel and that Wintel is perfect. It doesn't mean any oh, no, of those Microsoft things. Microsoft can't stand Intel. Right, right, <laughs> but, right. So yeah, it's not like, Intel. it's, yeah. But I feel like people who were making all these yeah. big assumptions that because Apple does well, X means Microsoft will do Y, you just don't understand how Microsoft thinks. You don't. A Apple has absolutely had an outsized influence compared to its, you know, market share or whatever, right? Size, so, right. And it's, yeah. uh, it's, um, they've influenced and there are us people in, at a, Microsoft, in a software way, in a hardware way. Yeah. People and there are too many people at Microsoft it. who, who tried to make Microsoft be Apple. Most of them mm -hmm. are gone, but not all of them. Um, there, you know, I agree with you. There's still some people in there who see, who, who give Apple an outsized amount of, kind of um not respect but just fear maybe well, they hold <laughs> for them up what on they this are pedestal, like they're showing us <laughs> they the way do. again and yeah but you right. know I, I, but, yeah uh, yeah they're different I, they're just different and it's like good bad really or indifferent i mean i yeah i feel like there there is a happy middle ground between the two extremes that are microsoft and apple when it comes to backward compatibility um mm -hmm. and that we're never going to get there so it doesn't matter what that middle ground is i mean yeah. we're, we are for better or worse at one end of that extreme and yep. that is what prevents ARM from ever really happening. You know, mm -hmm. if you know, <laughs> if you could, if you could run an ARM-based Windows PC and never use any normal software, yeah, it works pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, if for some reason what ships in the box with Windows 10 is all you'll ever need, it's okay. It's okay. Um, and but, for, you know, just and to for make, many of their customers, that is okay, right? Like, there's a group of people yeah, that's okay for. Maybe. I think, but I mean. Maybe not but enthusiast again, you, types, but yeah. But you get it home, you use it for a couple of weeks. I was try, th there must be a term for this. I today, for example, I had to, I tried to install some software and it was zipped as a seven zip file. 
Now, 7-Zip is an, a software application. You can install it's free. I don't mm -hmm. normally, I don't just install it. Like it's something I, I only install when I need it. And I, there, this is the term I'm looking for. There must be a word for that thing. Like, so I had to install 7-Zip so I could, un, you know, unzip this thing and then install the other application. It's not super essential to me. But every once in a while, I run into something like that. And that's what it's like to be a Windows user. And the, the problem with ARM is, I'm not, 7-Zip probably works fine on ARM. I actually have no idea. But you run into, you it, you may not notice it on day one. You may go through a day and be like, oh, this thing works great. And then you're out in a hotel on a road trip or you're doing whatever it is. You want to connect to a fax or a scanner or something. And you're like, I, I, this works on my other computers. How come it doesn't work here? And you, you don't know as a normal person why. And that's right. the downfall to ARM. That's the that's the yeah. thing everyone who uses this will run into, will run into. Uh, it, is, it is inevitable, not to mention the performance problems. Like, it's horrific. And mm -hmm. this is after years of work. This is after taking the first-gen devices that had 25 hours of battery life and chopping away at that so they could get the performance up to some minimally acceptable level. And now it only gets like 12 hours of battery life, but it's still really good, right? You know, <laughs> if it doesn't run yeah. everything you need, it's not Windows. Yeah. It's something else. It's something less. Yeah. That's it. Okay, That's let me throw another job let me throw another weird monkey wrench into this convo. Because you probably heard this on Twitter this week too. So there was a story, I think it was Bloomberg saying, um, oh no, it was Wall Street Journal saying ARM holdings is for sale, likely, yeah. or they're gonna IPO the company, right? So I had so many people saying to me, do you think Microsoft's going to buy ARM? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't at all. I mean, like that's people are just saying, of course, that's what they're going to do. Given what Apple just did, like it, Microsoft's going to go buy ARM. I'm like, no, no, no. They don't need to do chips. And by they the don't. way, it would cost more than Nokia yeah. did. And so, they don't need yeah, that. So. It's, it's not core to their business. No. It's not. <laughs> anyone who asks you that, um, you can tell their head is in the wrong place because it, like there are people at Microsoft who still think Apple or Microsoft needs to be Apple and compete with right. Apple and whatever. There are absolutely people in this community who think if Microsoft could just do XXX, they'll be back in mobile. There'll be another platform. Yep. We'll, we're back, yep. baby. <laughs> and it's like, you know, yeah. I, <laughs> Look, Microsoft yeah. <laughs> has this cute little hardware business. Um, they do absolutely make custom chipsets and everything. They, you know, they okay. they talk about how they worked with AMD and Qualcomm and I guess Intel as well on special versions of their chips for okay. Surface devices and all that. And that's all very interesting and everything. But when you look at a company like Apple that sells billions of devices, or uh, Google and its partners, which sell many billions of devices. Um, having that integration of hardware and software, that's when that makes the most sense, right? When you're mm -hmm. right. literally the platform that matters is you're doing both sides of it. You're doing the hardware and the software. Yeah. Um, you know, Windows, I, look, I, sorry, guys. I mean, uh, the Windows PC yeah. market is two-thirds the size it used to be. Even at its height, it would mm -hmm. be approximately one-fifth the size of the smartphone market. Like it's yeah. – even if we could go back to the magical days of 2011, take that market share, bring it down to 2020 – and compare it to what's going on in the smartphone space, it would still be the smallest platform. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's, in, yeah. as far as in not understanding Microsoft and how, how they compare to Apple, Microsoft is pragmatically going to where their customers are. They're not trying to induce them to buy their hardware and jump onto Windows. I mean, a lot of them are on Windows and that's great and they'll support that, of course. A lot of them on our iPads or Macs or whatever they're using, Android devices, they're going to support them there too. You know, yep. and then so ultimately I, hope they go to the cloud, right? Like, so you always have yeah, to remember yeah. what's Microsoft's priority now. It's not Windows. It's not Windows anymore. And so they're going to ride the Windows Wintel train as long as they can. And then they're already positioned for their next thing, mm -hmm. which is make cross-platform apps um, and then take people to the cloud. That's it. God help us. If they bought ARM, they would buy it so they could make ARM-based chipsets for their data centers. They would. They wouldn't be yeah, doing this. Right. To, yeah, that's their future. Future you know? isn't yeah. Windows. I mean, they, we know that, no. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I know, but some, I mean, you, know, some, you know, people resist, right? People, right. There, there are, we hear from these people every day on Twitter, the on our sites. I mean, yeah. I hope they won't. Why won't they ship Duo? This is the beginning of the turnaround, yeah. and it's like. Mm -mm. Guys, mm -mm. <laughs> you gotta you gotta rein it in it's a like, little bit. Okay? Nope. <laughs> Hardware is not a big good margin business for them. No, right. not at all. Look at look at services, man. Services where even Apple wants to do services. I know.
Yeah. Right, but Leo, that's where they can said, clean up. You yeah. said you agreed with him, so I'm curious. No, I don't agree. I that? don't agree that uh, uh, Microsoft has to respond, but I think that yeah. what uh, and it remains to be seen. I mean, there's a lot of question marks still, but what the potential for what Apple could do with a fully integrated hardware and software stack, custom yeah, chips amazing. designed specifically for the uses, th you know, that they need to be designed for, really means they could make hardware that is nothing like a PC. Right now, they're making PCs. Yeah. yeah. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're using the transition. They're, they're making PCs. Uh, you can run Windows on a Mac. You can wipe the hard drive and run Windows on it. It runs fine because it's off-the-shelf PC software, mm -hmm. hardware, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, And that's why when they made an Ultrabook, when they made the MacBook Air, everybody in the PC industry said, great, we'll make one too. Mm -hmm. Right. The potential right. is here for... Uh, I don't Apple think... Make we can't copy. They can't copy it. And I don't think that the PC business is a great business necessarily. But I do think that Apple will have the heart, will kind of have a hardware stack that is very difficult to compete with from from the watch yeah. all the way up to workstations. It'll be yeah. very I hard. I mean, they to kind of with. already do, but this will make it even better. Yeah, yeah for sure. And so yeah. what I think, I think it, sh it shakes Intel. I don't see where Intel's future lies, to be honest with you. I don't think the server market is going to stay with Intel. Yeah, so I, I, here's my guess for Intel. They, they they move slow. You know, they are the Microsoft of hardware in some ways. Um, but they have shown in the past, and they're starting to show it with this kind of thing as well, uh, their ability to adapt to what's happening out in the market. And so I suspect what we're going to see from Intel is a switch in their own architecture to something that resembles ARM, big cores and little cores and more efficient and so forth. But... Right now, I mean, they more than half of their revenues come from data centers, and that's really where the big hit's going to be. It's not mm -hmm. Apple going ARM or, you know, Windows going ARM. It's going to be when data centers go ARM, and um, that is actually that's a legitimate concern. I would say yeah. there is a much no. In fact, it's a certainty. Um, data centers will almost certainly be largely ARM, whereas Windows-based PCs, at least, unless something really changes. There's just no reason to bother. So, right. So I I still stand by my earlier prediction that as mm -hmm. these existing PCs age out over the next five to ten years, yeah. companies are going to – we're already looking at this. We can do this. Looking at thin clients operating on servers mm -hmm. in Azure, for instance, or somewhere mm -hmm. other else. You know, yeah. we're, we're going to put our edit machines in the rack here um, mm -hmm. right. and then have thin clients so that – uh, work from home just f furthers that so yeah. that our editors can work from home mm -hmm. on the servers here. So mm -hmm. I think that that's really the future of PC. So yeah. I, what, what, what I think Assay is saying is not inaccurate. This thing that we think of as Wintel, Windows PCs yeah. running on Intel hardware, its days are numbered even if Apple hadn't done this. Yeah. Well, I was gonna say, no, well, I, I agree mean, with technically, that. Yeah. Technically speaking, the smartphone explosion, the mobile wave or whatever you want to call that, is has already killed Wintel as a, a, a mm -hmm. concern anyway. Yeah. I mean, this is hasty. like I said, yeah. the yeah. smartphone market alone is many times the size of the PC right. market, and Intel has zero share of this. Market. So the real question zero. is, where where would wi a Windows Intel machine? Who's going to be buying sense. those in the in the next five years? Where do they make sense still? There'll be a legacy market. There's, I mean, right. of course. Well, I, yeah. So, yeah, businesses which are still big, mm -hmm. uh, a big market, and then, but I, you know, the profitable part is the thing we've talked about before: the premium PC market for creators, uh, game players, um, and uh, those kinds, you know, engineers, architects, mm -hmm. you know, that scientific, et cetera, that yeah. that kind of thing. Developers, I honestly, like we talked about this possibility before. You know, the next twelve months or whatever it is, we're going to see. Um, uh, iPhone and iPad apps running natively on a uh, an Apple Silicon Mac. Right. And that's going to be amazing. Right. Mm -hmm. The year after that is the more interesting to me uh, because what happens when Mac software runs on an iPad Pro? Right. right? When you mm -hmm. take right. that it's a, uh, it's an incredible ecosystem. video editing software or yeah. their Xcode software that writes apps. Like mm -hmm. once you can make apps on it, uh, you can develop software on it. Yes. And I don't mean with like the mm -hmm. Swift playgrounds nonsense that they have on the iPad. I mean actual programming environments. Then that thing is, yeah. Then it replaces a yeah. computer for sure. I just think the lines will be blurred. It's a continuum now, yeah. and mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. and so anyway, um, 
Well, I think the fundamental point Gasset is making, I, yeah, he's, it's not Microsoft's going to start making ARM chips. That's That part's, I agree with you, that's nuts. Yeah. yeah. They don't need to do that. Uh, or rushing rushing to fix Windows on ARM. I'm like, yeah, if they well, could, they'd like to. How but, long yeah, do you think Microsoft it. will be in the hardware business at all? Uh, well, I think, I, actually, so you know, I was going to say, I think businesses are buying surfaces, like, to some degree. So as long yeah. as they can... As long as they can use it as kind of a um, premium device that helps influence what other OEMs do, I don't see them getting out of it at all. Yeah, you know, it's not like Surface is not a failure by any measure. I mean, no. I, no. but I mean, it's it, um, look, the, the Duo is important for one reason um, because I don't think it's a particularly compelling device. And it's not because right. we're going to find out how much people like two screens. This is Microsoft's first Android device. I mean, that that itself mm. is that that to me is the most fascinating thing here. Yeah. Um, because, you know, like Mary Jo said, the goal is to get people running Microsoft services in the cloud. And right. Microsoft doesn't care what care. device that works. They don't care. They, they don't can. They don't. I, I don't see this happening. But again, if Surf, I could picture Panos Panay and Surface believing as possible, if they could influence the hardware market on the Android side, like they have the PC market on the Windows mm. side. Um, they could potentially be the inspiration for some kind of a, a future set of device types that are new uh, that run Android. You know, like mm -hmm. they, you know, they, they legitimate, uh, legit. I actually want to say legitimatize. I don't know this. I know this other word. Uh, they made legitimate <laughs> this yeah. tablet that can replace the laptop form factor with Surface Pro. I think that device is in many ways as iconic as the MacBook Air. They need to do something like that with Android because Android is decidedly lacking when yeah. it comes to tablets, and two in ones, and or you know they have these Chromebook mm -hmm. things that this seem to be going nowhere. Um, you can't seed the entire premium market to Apple. It's so where do all you, the problems. Do you think? Do you think the successor to Surface Duo would be a tablet, like the next Android device Microsoft does is I mean, more of a tablet? It's hard because they don't control the software. Right. Um, the, the big problem, anyone who's used an Android tablet can tell you this. You still see a lot of phone apps stretched up to a bigger screen like it's garbage. Yeah. And um, mm -hmm. and I would say just based on my own experience, oftentimes, most times, many times, uh, an iPhone version of an app is better, materially better yes, than the Android that's version. That's correct. When mm -hmm. you get to a tablet, it's exponentially yeah, better. It's not even close. It's a huge problem. <laughs> now, Microsoft, though... You know, we talked about like, well, here's an ARM-based PC. It's only running Microsoft software. And you said correctly, for a lot of people, that's enough. Well, what if you could mm -hmm. do that on Android? You have Office, right? Teams, mm -hmm. right? Edge. Remember, they tried Windows. to do that with Samsung. Remember, they had that bundling deal with Office yeah. 365 yeah. Right. with Samsung on tablets and I think on phones. And um, what they realized so, was they, yeah. ha they have to, you know, but they have to do it themselves because Samsung's going to push Samsung. Yeah. You know, Microsoft is a folder on a Samsung device. On a Microsoft device, you have a Microsoft launcher. You get the Microsoft software mm -hmm. pre-installed. You get their keyboard, mm -hmm. their browser, their search engine. It's a Microsoft mm -hmm. device. Um, yeah. It has to have the Google Play Store. It's not viable. And right. their software has to be optimized for that form factor. And, right. and a Surface Pro that runs mm -hmm. Android, yeah, I could see that being the next one, sure. Mm -hmm. Makes a lot more sense mm -hmm. than a Surface Neo does or a Surface Duo. So Surface Go Android Edition. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. No, who wants that? <laughs> I don't want well, that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I surface. I would say surface. I know. I'm like, who's the audience? I don't know. But who who buys Android tablets now? That's that. I also don't know. So people who are right. cheap. Yeah. yeah, that's it. And with a three hundred dollar iPad yourself. available, you'd have to be really I know. cheap. Like you, you have to be pretty cheap, right? <laughs> yeah. You have uh, to, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to actively hate Apple in yeah. some visceral way that you can't explain logically. <laughs> I don't know because the iPad is such a better. <laughs> yeah, like me. I don't have an Android tablet, but. <laughs> yeah, you're not that crazy. No, not that crazy. I, there's a lot. I mean, don't forget that Amazon's Fire tablets are also Android. Oh, true. Kind of Android, yeah. uh, Amazon terrible. Android. Yeah. Those, those are terrible. But they sell them. And why do they sell them? Because they're cheap. They sell and a lot of them. And also some phone companies have giveaways with <laughs> Android right. tablets when yeah. you buy a phone, yeah. right? The, yeah. real, the real question is, would it be possible? See, all of these things can be solved if you could run 
Windows, and you could, you know, and, and on Azure, and I could mm -hmm. run Windows 7, 8, 9, 10. I could do whatever compatibility mm -hmm. legacy I want, software mm -hmm. I wanted to run safely, mm -hmm. securely in the cloud on a thin client, maybe a client made by, I don't think it, it's out of the question to be a Surface. Well, by the way, that would absolutely be part of this. Of course it would, because mm -hmm. there there will be, in Microsoft's case, businesses who say, look, I'd like to do something like this. It'd be simpler. Yeah. It'd be cheaper, yeah. et cetera. But we have this legacy app that we need. And they would say, yeah, mm -hmm. put it up in Windows Virtual right. Desktop. You can mm -hmm. pass the app down to your device. So all of that's user, doable, right? I mean, that's not, that's, yeah. yeah. And it's safer, right? It's, it's simpler. It's managed. Yeah. I mean, and one of their big audiences, they want are first line workers. So those are the right. people who would have those cheap kind of thin client slash tablet thing. There, right? are, an, there are analogs was, to this situation. I mean, in the early days, if you wanted a, a website, you would run your own server but you'd mm -hmm. be nuts to do that today. You run you you, you run <laughs> a managed know. server because they're professionals <laughs> who run it for you. These Windows yeah. line of business apps are going to be like the 21st century version of COBOL apps, you know, in they Y2K. They're, never going like they're, away. they're the cockroaches of the internet. They're never going to go away. Every corporation never. out there, every Fortune 500 company has from one to a dozen apps that were written in VB5 or in some nonsense yeah. back in the 1990s. Yeah. And they're like, we just can't give it up. Good news. You can yeah. run it on Azure. And you mm -hmm. can run it at performance, performant, yeah. securely. Yeah. And, oh, by the way, if you want to work from home today, you could use your mm -hmm. crappy old PC at home or your Android tablet, yeah. and it looks exactly yeah. the same. I think, I think the thing that has to happen to make this more real is the price has to come way down. And the way Microsoft licenses it, well, licenses WBD has, has to change, to right? So right. we need pervasive 5G or 6G networking yeah. everywhere, you know. So right. uh, the, the Flex 5G that I just mentioned, as its name suggests, has a 5G SIM in it. I live in Pennsylvania. It doesn't matter that I live in rural Pennsylvania in this case. I could live in the middle of Philadelphia. There is no Verizon 5G in Pennsylvania anywhere. I'd have to go to New York City. It would be the closest place. Um, Rich Woods, who writes for Neowin, a friend of ours, also got one of these devices to review. And where he lives, I, I want to say it's probably out in Long Island somewhere, I think. Uh, he also doesn't have 5G, but he can hop on the train and go into New York City. And he did that. And um, he took a screenshot of the net speed test that he got on this thing in downtown Manhattan. Download speed was 711 uh, <laughs> nice. megabits per second. <laughs> Can't wait. Now, <laughs> here in Pennsylvania, on my cable connection... My fastest possible speed is 330 megabits per second. So right. here he is untethered out yeah. in the world with a laptop getting over <laughs> double. That's not even as fast as it can go. It's just the one. The, you yeah. know, the but honestly, best. what do you need that goes faster than 300 megabits? What do you do that you need more I, than nothing. that? But, but the point of it is I, I, I want it everywhere. You know, like, right. like you know, when we first got PCs, you went into a special room. It was tied to the wall. Yeah, you right. used it, you know, <laughs> and now you can kind of you go around the house. You can leave that, you know, the next step for this is the connectivity thing. And I think what yeah. puts the availability of remote apps over the top is literally pervasive connectivity. You need to be able to access that app from anywhere as if it were natively running on the device. And 5G plus, I think, will... Uh, actually, 4G would do it too, honestly. But is, if it was just pervasively available everywhere, right, so that it was confusing. Like you ever run an app on your computer and it doesn't start? And you're like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> you kind of futz with it yeah. a little bit or whatever. Uh, it needs to be like that, you know. Like it, it, it's unusual that this thing doesn't work. Yeah, I think that's what you're going to get. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, we're already testing this with things like Stadia and uh, xCloud where we're running very right. demanding software off servers and the client mm -hmm. doesn't matter. God, I used to, when we used to go on business trips and I, I, I the, this is probably 15 years ago ish, you know, I would, I would go through this ritual where I would copy my podcasts that I was listening to my music library, some selection of videos that I wanted to watch on a, on a laptop so that, you know, God help me if I was ever out in the world and needed to entertain myself for two seconds, I wouldn't be bored, you know? <laughs> and, um, it was stupid, but you know, now, of course, with phones, you kind of walk. You know, people, we switched these. I, yeah. I, you don't need Microsoft just, briefcase I, anymore. Yeah, I, I stream <laughs> in my car to my phone, and it comes right. out of the speakers in the car. You know, yeah. uh, apps can be like that, too. Yeah. That's the, yeah. that's really an important uh, uh, point because for a long time, people say, oh, no, I have to have my music mm -hmm. on my device. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. I have to, <laughs> you know, I have to download. I have to sync it. Mm -hmm. and the whole, it's and like the a whole, lie. Yeah. 
Not anymore. I don't mm -hmm. think. Yep. The thing is, people who remember that still think that way. So that's right. the problem yep. with these mindsets. They don't change. But a young person, like yep. my, my kid, your kid, they don't download stuff yeah. onto their phone. No. They listen yeah. to Spotify. Yep. So right. I, I think that right. that's going to change. It's going to take a while because there's plenty of businesses out there who are still running Windows 7 on, and their yeah. dental management software is on there and they'll be damned yeah, if know. they'll ever replace it. But at some yeah. point, that computer is going to die. And when that happens four or yeah. five years from now, it might be reasonable for them to say, oh, I could get a $400 thin client and have services yep. in the cloud. And you know Microsoft wants By the that, way, that right? would be the safe place right. to run that stupid thing that you would just yes. type. Yeah. The, the app my dentist <laughs> yeah. uses is, is very clearly a Visual Basic application running on Windows 7. Like yes. it's mm -hmm. a combination of all the wrong technologies. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. And and she and they can't take care of it. It's not like no. they must have a – they probably pay someone, you know, to – Make sure it's mm -hmm. as secure as it that's, can be and so that's forth. That's where the other resistance is going to come from is uh, MSPs who say, oh, we, uh, no, no, we better keep it this way. This is, the only, this is, this is my lifeblood. Microsoft's yeah. been dealing with it since Office 365 <laughs> yeah. appeared. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I really want to sell this package. Yeah, we're still going to offer uh, small business services for those businesses. That, yeah, when was the last time you heard about that thing? <laughs> you know, it's gone. Yeah. I, 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 for one, think this is a great future. And it's a, and it, yeah. Satya Nadella has yeah. been preparing mm -hmm. for this for six years. This is the future he wants to move to. It's a great mm -hmm. way for Microsoft to make money. They can't, yep. Yep. I mean, maybe Surface is a billion dollar business, maybe. It's like two billion, two but billion. we don't even know if it makes money. We don't even know that. That's just revenue. Right? We don't know if they're. Uh, by the way, revenue. we know that yeah. it doesn't because if it ever had, we would have heard about it. <laughs> they would say, they would say it was in so, the black. They would. Yeah. And they never, never have problem. said that. Yeah, not even once. So why do they even do it? Well, to influence it's the market, the, right? Yeah, it's it's yep. you you, I, and I'm not being facetious. I mean, it's an investment, right, right? In the in the market surrounding Windows, it, they're trying yep. to. They literally designed this thing so that PC makers would copy it and make yep. PCs better. So it's a reference architecture. You know, yeah. Yes, I mean yep. when uh, they came out with also, Media Center PC. Yeah. Back in the day, sorry, they yeah. they were like, look, they they're like, look, it'll be beautiful. It'll be like a stair piece of stair equipment. Yeah. You slide it into your component system. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> and then uh, they they came out and they were like towers. Yeah. And it's like, what what is someone gonna do with a tower what piece happened? in their living room? <laughs> HP, yeah. you know, no, because that's what they were yeah. getting. It happened with tablet yeah. PCs. Yeah. Uh, it happened with media center PCs, and it was you know, and when they got to Windows 8, they were like, mm -hmm. guys, we're doing multi touch. Like we we need you to. Actually, do get this. on board. Yeah, yeah. If you were to, go, yeah. Yeah, if you were to if you go back, yeah, and look always at the connected, first right? Yeah, they've yeah. they've had to use their own hardware to to say, look, this can work. Um, yep. And I'll, I'll tell you, you guys know, I looked at a lot of different PCs before I bought the laptop three, and I think they finally, after three tries, figured out how to make a really beautiful, functional machine. So oh, yeah, Mary Jo. <laughs> Mary Jo, if you could run Notepad in the cloud, though. Which, mm -hmm. by the Would way, I? Is where you really could. I can. <laughs> you could. And then you could have devices, a variety of devices to fit yeah. your busy lifestyle. You know and they I, all log into they, the same notepad. Yeah. I would love notepad. it. Notepad.exe never has to die. Yep. No, never if, has to if die. there was a, if I could carry in my purse a really small, yeah. thin client that That's was right. functional and had a good keyboard That's right. that I could attach or fold all up you need or whatever. Is a screen and a keyboard and connectivity. I don't need a full PC. I right. don't no. need one. You're a no. perfect example. How much would yes. you pay every month for Notepad as a service? What, what's the what's the cutoff point for you? Well, so. <laughs> so I would pay a lot if it if that was the way to use Notepad, but they'd never sell it I, that way though. They'd sell no. And I more what I don't solution. want what right. I don't want Notepad to turn into is Office three sixty five, right. where they're adding new features constantly. I want it to stay as it is. If you could sell me Notepad as a service that never was updated except for security, I would be more interested in that. That's what I do. I exercise Emacs as a service, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I have my Emacs server running and down the hall, and I can log into it from anywhere. I think. I mean, and uh, by the way, the other good thing about this is my Apple does not want this to be in this business at all. So you're not going to, have to see Apple running around making these sexy thin clients because they couldn't, you know. They don't want to be in that business, they, they, right? They couldn't sell enough. They couldn't sell them for enough. This yeah. is that's a that is a you know that is a 
cutthroat business. Yeah. That is low margin crap. Is. You know, plastic business. Yeah. You'll be buying. No, them you don't want to make one of those. Remember Google <laughs> trying to make the super expensive premium Chromebook right. that because they were like, some people want that beautiful device. I'm like, yeah, uh, do they? I, I, I have one right here. And when's the last time I opened it? Right. Yeah. <laughs> I do think, though, that Apple doesn't mind because Apple has this continuum. And they're going to always have a device. They're going to, their next is, thing is going to be glasses. They're going to have a device in this. This is going to be a continuum of hardware. And if you need a high-end video editing machine, they'll have it. That's a small business. It's, it's yeah. a right. tiny business. But the, mm -hmm. but the cachet Apple gets from it is huge. And so right. yeah, I think that this well, is... It's used by Hollywood and... Exactly. It's a great product uh, strategy. And, so know, then people yeah. buy Apple. You see Apple Watches everywhere. You see Apple Glasses everywhere. You'll see iPhones everywhere. You might see tablets or laptops of various kinds. They'll make, they'll make a lot of interesting form factors. The only mm -hmm. thing Apple's not good at, and it's the one thing that Microsoft and the OEMs and Android makers are good at, is choice. Yeah. Apple by necessity can only really make a few different things. And so Apple's kind of moda is we choose for you. This is what you really want. And you're going to want this. And we and know what's want, best for it you. It comes in three colors. That's it. <laughs> and that's Apple it. And if you don't like those. pink this yeah. week, so yeah. it's pink. But, Enjoy. But, <laughs> and that's the one thing we might lose if we don't have this vibrant Windows OEM <laughs> ecosystem is you can get a PC like anything well, you want. I, I yeah. think that will always exist for the people that want it. And whether you want Windows or Linux or whatever, I mean, I think there'll always be alternatives. Um, and I, look, I mean, Windows 10 certainly has its problems. We just spent half an hour on the, some of those problems. But I mean, it's a mature, full-featured, you know, operator. It works great. I mean, there's all kinds of software development stuff and rich applications and you know, it's all there. So, it, I mean, it's not going away, but it's... Well, but that's what got us started. Wintel... Yeah, it's not the mainstream. Intel's yeah. not... Intel's on life support. Windows, mm -hmm. eh, you know, neither one of these has much of a future. These are legacy technologies, Let's, right? That's really what he's saying. My horse works great. I don't want to hear about your superhighway. <laughs> and really, the, you know? the last place Intel can still sell chips is to servers, but their power... Uh, profiles terrible. I know. This is this is what's going to kill Intel. It's going to be the data center. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yep. Thank God AMD's go, doing well these uh, days because they can pick up. <laughs> AMD a is a boutique. Season. AMD is the artisanal pickle maker. They're yeah. The they're they should be in Brooklyn in a warehouse they of bricks because they're they all have Jacob's like goatees. And, yeah. I'm glad they yeah. exist. I love Jacob's right. pickles. <laughs> But that's not going to change this <laughs> universe. <you know? laughs> that's good. Yeah, that is. Uh, AMD sauerkraut. It's a specialty mm -hmm. item, but, you know, yep. some people want it. 64 different spices. Yep. Spicy <laughs> mustard, pickles, and uh, you make a great IPA. <laughs> Actually, now we're talking. the beer market might be a good an analogy for this, except people always <laughs> drink beer. So that would, that's a terrible analogy. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, honestly, I feel like this is fine. This is the future. This is how it should be. Yeah. And yeah. Apple has found a great role for itself. And guess what? Microsoft has found a great role for itself. The only yeah. company that really doesn't, I, it's hard to imagine a future for is Intel. I know. They really are kind of the odd man out because Microsoft <laughs> has made this transition to the cloud and Intel kind of has it, yeah. you know. Um, In, but what Microsoft did is is unusual to the point where it's a case study. Oh, yeah, it it's will like, be studied. Yeah, wow. exactly. That's they exactly pivoted. Right. Yep. Wow. They, and they did it, and it yep. worked. Wow. And they knew they had yeah. to. Like, their backs were against the wall. Right. Once once G Google Apps started coming out, they're like, you know what? we got to do something with Office. Yep. Like, yeah, they should have been Bethlehem <laughs> Steel, you know. They, uh, uh, the rotting hulk of their infrastructure rotting, you know, or sitting out there in the landscape and making it ugly. Um, mm -hmm. But they didn't. They, like Leo said, they yeah. pivoted. And uh, it's just, that's, yeah, it's going to be studied. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. I can't think yeah. of another I, case. I don't think Intel's going to do it. I don't think no. Intel's going to do it. They, you know, they may be like IBM. You know, IBM survives because they have a lot of patents. And, uh, yeah. and, you know, they can and a lot of legacy customers yeah. still too. So they, they'll probably be like, I mean, I don't think they'll go away, but they'll, I don't be, no. see soft software makers have legacy customers. Hardware makers don't. Right. You know, well, they, these, these guys, things. they don't sell devices to individuals. They sell chips that go inside things like 
They, they could be replaced. They uh, are being. No, I was thinking mainframes when I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't. don't but that's this, not Intel. That's. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I would hate to be in charge of Intel right now. It's hard to imagine what the what the way forward would be. That's they. They need to buy ARM. Zentel. Have you got? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, maybe they will. I don't think if they. Right. I don't know if no, they I mean cash. seriously. Like yeah. if they if they're serious about me, like being in business, what they need is ARM architecture. Well, that is one of Didn't the scenarios. I guess they talks about right is right. Intel Didn't one ARM. of Intel's fabs though say they were oh, yeah. going to start building ARM? Intel they had did, an right? ARM business. It was called X Scale. Remember that when they were going to be yeah, uh, yeah. in mobile phones everywhere. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that worked out. Yeah, but at least their 5G <laughs> business is going strong. <laughs> Actually, yeah. you know what? It, this is a pivot you could make, Intel. Mm -hmm. We need U.S. made network architecture. Oh, Nobody boy. wants to buy Huawei 5G. Yeah. Everybody's terrified of Chinese made. God, they just they just sold off their their networking Whoops. business. Damn. I know, that's an interesting point. Darn it. Just they, they could be, uh, they, they, yeah, they could be, like the new Ford Bronco has got this kind of a, kind of a neat legacy vibe, but it's a modern vehicle. I mean, they could try to do something yeah, like that that's with it. networking. Yeah. <laughs> Intel inside. We have Intel, uh, ding, Intel ding, is ding. inside the wire. Ding, 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 ding. You like the new modem sound every time your phone rings. <laughs> modems, yeah. they can make modems. You know, yeah, yeah that's a, there's got to be business there. Um, so are you, do you have on your laptop three, do you have 2004 yet, Mary Jo Foley? Nope. Nope. Okay. No one does. Anybody? No one does. Nope. It's been waiting through to get it through Microsoft. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people listening is probably have it. <laughs> They're forcing they installed it. it. And yeah. they'll tell you it's working right. fine. And I'm sure it is. Yep. Yep. Uh -oh. But here's, remember I said last week, every every day I start my day pretty much by saying, Microsoft, hey, like, what's up with Surface Laptop 3 and Surface Pro 7 not getting 2004? Finally, I got an in indirect answer. They changed the wording of their KB article, and they added, please note, if there are no other safeguards that affect your device, you'll get 2004 on these. So... That means there must be other things that are affecting those, those devices besides the always on, always connected bug. And like Paul said earlier in the show, we don't know what those are because Microsoft doesn't elaborate on why you can't get um, a certain update. They just say it, your device isn't quite ready yet. That's it. I feel like I feel like we're overdue on a John Cable post explaining how everything is going exactly as they thought. <laughs> I know. It's been a while since we had one of those, and I'm like, when are they going to put it out? They it must be soon. Maybe they'll like wait till they finally the fix this. Would be this. the ideal time. <laughs> or they'll wait till they finally fix the Surface Laptop Three and Pro Seven and say, "See, look, everything's perfect." The part yeah. we don't know, and I can't get an it's answer to you is talk. why. Sorry about that. Yeah. Why? But why did we not know about this before 2004 started rolling out? I don't know. People keep asking me that on Twitter. They're like, so wait, why didn't we know about this before? Didn't There's they your, know? The Insider program can't even write a blog post. What makes you think <laughs> they can deploy software? All right. No, I you just, know? that is my, that's the one question now that's plaguing me because I'm like, people must have tested this. They must have known this was a problem. Why didn't they? It, I'm not saying why didn't they stop the rollout. I'm just saying why didn't they acknowledge it in the notes somewhere before it started rolling out. That's all. It's yeah. a simple request, really. It's, it's, no, you're it's a, you're a little thing to ask. Unreasonable. <laughs> I'm not being unreasonable. <laughs> it's a small thing. I know. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if you don't have it yet on those devices, also, if you don't have it on the Surface Book 2, 3, the Pro X, Surface which I hear people still yeah. have it. We don't know why. We don't know yeah. why, but yeah, they're holding it because something is not going to work well if right. you get it. That's all we know. I this will be a new weekly feature on Windows <laughs> Weekly. What's wrong with my PC? <laughs> Where now? is it? Where is it? Where is 2004? Where is it? Where is Waldo? Where is it? <laughs> It's like a Where's Waldo poster, with, but it's Pretty all much. computers. And you have yeah. to point out the ones yeah. that are 2004. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's so bizarre. It's so bizarre. Yeah. It's such a mystery. It's strange. Yeah. It's just a yeah. mystery. I know. Okay. Well, I just thought I'd ask. PC yeah. sales are up. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, COVID. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, temporary bump. I think uh, everybody went Gardner home. called it a working from a short term recovery. Yeah. People got home, discovered they didn't have a computer to work on. PC sales jumped about 7%. That's using numbers average between Gartner and IDC. I, one of the two had a much higher jump and one of the two had a much smaller jump. But uh, basically 68.5 million units sold up from 64 million. See, See uh, I've been proven wrong within the space of a single podcast. Well, <laughs> 64 million sounds like a lot of zeros, but uh, and it is. But, you know, again, compared to smartphones and stuff, it's yeah. tiny. Um Lenovo and HP were basically neck and neck for the first spot. I, I put Lenovo for 17.1 million units compared to 16.8 for HP. And then Dell, Apple, and Acer uh, round out the top five. See, you can't give up on Wintel. Look at all those PCs still well, being sold. Well, they could be running Linux. Let's not get uh, out, of, out of control Oh, come here. on. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, 7.29% of them are running Mac OS. Oh, that's in, in the in the it's in the count. Mm -hmm. That counts as a PC. Oh, I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, just you know, what is your prediction for when Apple? Let's say this time next year when Apple's kind of firing on all their market yep, share is silicon. Yeah. Go so up. what is it now? Seven. It's seven percent now. Yeah. And that's by the way, that's Eight. up year over year. They've actually had a big. <laughs> I think you're right. It's not going to be think a huge I, amount. But success maybe. for them needs to be measured double digits. Like they need, if they can they hit get to 10, 10, that would be huge. Yeah. I don't know if they've ever. It would be giant Absolutely. if they could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it would. Because they're just one they company. They're not, right. you know. I, I'll tell you, whatever they put out that first uh, ARM-based MacBook Air or whatever, that quarter is going to be a bonanza for Mac sales. I bet they're going to have one of the best quarters they've ever Well, the had. rumor is that will be this year. That'll be in the next few months. Yeah. Like I think that's going to be, that one quarter will be explosive. Yeah, it might be very so, interesting. This might be a really dumb question, but, but I'm not an Apple ecosystem person. Why can't they have sure. OEMs? Why not? Oh, they could. They did. Then Steve I know, Jobs but why came not back now? and they said no. Um, so Bill Gates infamously right, tried to convince John uh, Scully to do this in the 1980s. He, he wanted them to license them. Imagine that. I mean, the guy who made Windows, right? <laughs> but uh, right. but I, I think this is before Windows became Windows. But uh, he wanted them to do it. Um, mm -hmm. I think John Scully, I don't know if he, he left. I think he might have, been, you know, he wasn't fired, but he was asked to leave. But I, part of it fired, might right? have been yeah. basically. But I think it was because he refused to do this. Really? Right. So, yeah. And then the guy who succeeded him was what, Schindler? Mike yeah, Schindler. Schindler, uh, Schindler I believe and he was Emilio. the guy that opened it up. Yeah. So Schindler yeah. would have been the guy that opened it up to. The compatible parties, right? And that yeah. was, I'll tell you, yeah. that was the experience that keeps Apple from doing it ever again because you can't control quality. Yeah. But what if they only allowed like people they really trusted they and said these and... two other OEMs can do it? That's yeah. it. Yeah, that's Apple, sometime in the next 30 days, is going to become literally the biggest company on earth. There is no reason for them to do what we're describing. Like there's. There's just yeah, no advantage to it. I mean, that's true. if the Mac if the Mac doubled in size, literally doubled, like what would that do to their revenues? It would be a mm. blip, you know. Mm. It would be a good blip, but it would be it would you know. No, you're right because it's, it's all about the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is not the future that's for true. them. So that's true. I, it's that's not true. it's not going to happen. Now. I just it just made me kind of think out loud. Like, so why don't they? If they're you know they're yeah, going to turn they the, did. Turn they did briefly. What were those companies' names? Like Power Max or something? Yeah, or? I can't remember. Oh, Motorola yeah. did one. Motorola yeah. was one of there the were, There were a lot of them. Star were, Max yeah. or something. It or? was not a good experience. Mm. There was one company that was really good. Remember they had they used to drive the Humvees around uh, <laughs> MacWorld in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> they had kind of like a guerrilla warfare thing going on. <laughs> That's funny. I don't remember. Yeah, that. I don't remember the name of the company, <laughs> but okay. I just just passed passing mm -hmm. thought, like yeah. you know, since they're yeah, starting a new era that. with ARM. That's stinking thinking. That's Windows thinking. That's stinking thinking. that's the kind of thinking you'd come up with if you were in Redmond. A Windows you, person. What, well, yeah. Windows, Windows person. You know, somebody who wants choice. Somebody no, who likes having no, no. options. It's not about choice. It's about yeah. domination. Is that it's it? It's about owning the market and every <laughs> domination. Well, if you think about it, Immoral really, combat domination, domination, dominate. <laughs> Isn't that in, a, in really what Apple is is all about? They just they they want to control every. That's the whole reason they're making yeah, their own they chips. Yeah, they want to control it. 
I know, right? They want to control the it. complete end-to-end complete. End experience. Completely yeah. and utterly. Yeah. Yep. Hmm. Okay. I just mm -hmm. want to put icons where I want them on a home screen. That's all I'm asking. <laughs> nope, you know, nope. exactly. I, like some basic small things. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's a little thing, but it would make. You can the choose your own better. browser and email client going forward with them, can't <laughs> yes, you? Right, right. Yes. Correct. Yes. Finally. Supposedly, yeah. Supposedly. I don't yeah. think it's in the UI yet, but yeah, that's coming. That's coming. Mm -hmm. Good. It's a step. You know, small step. A little bit. But. Little tiny steps. Yeah. No, that's not Apple. Apple is. I own it all. Every I bit want of control. It. Every bit <laughs> yep. of it. I know. Sure. Yeah. It um, seems to be working okay for them. But on the other hand, could you ever see Apple adding millions of new features for Outlook? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. No. <laughs> Who I think can it was even just keep a week track? Ago. <laughs> right. Well, remember they introduced a bunch of features for Teams. And yeah. I was like, look at these guys. They actually <laughs> said when these features would arrive. It was really yeah. clear cut. I thought, man, they'd really we turned a new They're leaf changing. over there. And then this yeah. happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Microsoft did this big announcement yesterday where they said, we've got all these new features coming to Outlook. And so, of course, your first question is, which Outlook do you mean? Yeah. Do you mean Outlook the Exchange <laughs> Client? Do you mean Outlook on iOS, Outlook on Android? Do you mean Outlook on the web? And so, if you look Windows, at their blog post Mac, yesterday, it doesn't really com. Say seven much. of them, I think. Yeah, there's at least seven <clears throat> different things it's called Angel Outlook. Legion. <laughs> yeah, or it's, I guess, Target Platforms <laughs> Legion. Seven exactly. is there's, there's seven different outlooks. At least seven <clears throat> different outlooks. So which were yeah. these features for? <laughs> All different things. So oh, some yeah. of the some, yeah. Outlook, yeah. Outlook web apps. Some were for iOS. Some for for Android. Sigh. Yeah. It tilted very heavily but, to Android uh, Outlook on the web. I would it say. Did. I think that was the it number did. one. I would say which so. Which is the commercial version of Microsoft 365. Yes. So um, the one thing to keep in mind about all of this is what Microsoft's trying to do, their holy grail is try to bring parity and features to all these different outlooks to the extent that you can. Um, so if you see them adding something like, now you can have meeting meetings insights and in Outlook for iOS and Outlook web app. It means it's probably already somewhere else and exists yeah, somewhere else. That's right. Right. Which, by so the way, they don't mention do. usually in this no. post. There was once or twice yeah. they said, oh, this was already this available already in the iOS here. version or something. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I, I applaud their effort to make all the outlooks similar to the extent that they can be. But we're in a period right now where this is very chaotic because when they announce a new feature, they don't usually tell you which version of Outlook it is. And people always want to know that because they're like, oh, okay, oh, so I can use it on my Android device, right? No, actually, this isn't for that. This is not for that. This is for the Win32 version of Outlook. Right. So, yeah. But if you are an Outlook user, you should go and check out Paul's post or my post or both where we talk about all of these features and which platform they're on. We're not going to try to explain that here because it would take <clears> us <throat> a few hours. I, I did that. hear from someone on Twitter who said that most of the features they announced are actually already available. They are already available and somewhere okay. in one of the Outlook platforms. I see. There's okay. nothing okay. that is brand, brand new in the announcement they made yesterday as far as I know. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I wasted 45 <laughs> minutes of my life writing that post. But oh man, <clears throat> I spent hours. Like I, I made, yeah. this was me. I actually took a piece of paper and a pen, and I made a right. grid on a piece of paper. And I was like, okay, this is here already. This is here. This is not here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I had to do that post yesterday because That's there's hysterical. so many different it's unreal. kinds of if i had a whiteboard i guess i could have done it on my digital whiteboard perhaps but i did not <laughs> paper and pen sometimes is the right way to go deciphering you know what, microsoft you know what you need you need table support and notepad <laughs> that's what i do need yeah i could if have used excel. markup you could do I it could have used excel yep. you guys but you know yeah could have oh well oh well yeah Oh, yeah. well. Well, indeed. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about the cloud. That's the future. All right. Is it? Yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it really? 
Yeah. Or is it yeah. the this is past? A, this first thing is something Mary Jo and I discussed at length yesterday privately because we were trying to figure out what, if anything, was actually new. I know. And what did we right. decide it was? It's one thing, right? Uh, one thing, I think. So anybody who knows Citrix, um, you know that Microsoft and Citrix have been partners for literally two decades. Yeah. And yeah. a question we get very often is when is Microsoft just going to buy Citrix? Well, they haven't bought them in two decades. So my guess is they're not going to buy them maybe because the price is too think, high. Or I was convinced they had dirt on Bill Gates. Like, how did Microsoft <laughs> not just pummel this country company into the ground? I know. And they I just know. keep partnering with them. It's crazy. I know. Like they both Great. sell exactly the same thing. Virtualization products, right? Yeah. They're, they're and exactly they, the they, same. <laughs> so, yeah. They, they're they sort of the same, but a lot, there are a lot of Microsoft customers who extend Microsoft's products with Citrix because they have some features that Microsoft doesn't have and they need those specific features. So yesterday, what they announced was a renewal of their 20-year partnership. Wow. And yeah, they, they announced again that Azure is their preferred cloud platform. They've already announced that before. God, they love each other. <laughs> they love each other. It's so weird. Windows Virtual Desktop, yeah, we're working with them on that. We already knew, we already knew that. So there's some like minor updates to their announcement around how they're going to go to market with the t with their tools and how they're going to try to get Citrix on-prem customers to Microsoft's cloud. But all you need to know is Microsoft's not buying Citrix, and they're still BFFs. That's the end. <laughs> Pretty much. I uh, does Citrix run on Azure? Is there a uh, so, a cloud host uh, of Citrix that runs on Azure? So Citrix, so Citrix software runs on Azure. It also runs on AWS and Google Cloud. They're very yeah, agnostic so one of the things, about this. Right. So one of the things you look for in this announcement in particular, but all their announcements is they'll say things like, Citrix is a preferred partner. Exactly. Uh, not yeah. the preferred, you know, like no. uh, every one of like their... Adobe. Uh, Adobe's the same way, right? qualified that way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Adobe is very tight with Microsoft on Azure, but yeah. Adobe still works but, with other clouds too, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. I'll never understand anyway. this relationship. <laughs> I'll never understand it. Yeah. This goes back to terminal services and what it was does. that? NT. But didn't Citrix, Four? didn't they work yeah, with Antifa, there was a terminal OS, service, uh, server. OS 2? Uh, oh, that was IBM. And that that's what yeah. happened. I, I, Ed Yakabuchi was at IBM. Ed Yakabuchi, yeah. On, I think there was, I, there was even some code sharing going on in the early days, I think. I, well, I, the I, old, think I don't know if it's true, but the old canard was that Ed Yakabuchi wrote Windows NT. Oh, no. He used to hear that all the time. Yeah, he did. That, yeah, and that, uh, or at least was, See? you know, intimately connected. They to know it. something. They know where the bodies are buried. And that, uh, and that exactly. somebody from Microsoft wrote OS two. I don't know. like Dave Cutler yeah, shipped him Cutler. with a knife in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the early OS two Windows intertwined history was very cool and fascinating. Long yeah. lost <laughs> in the mists of time. Yes. We don't really know if that's just, you know, what people are saying or, but it was, well, it was widely said. It was a good story. Devor Dvorak <laughs> always used to say that. And Ed was you know, a friend. Well, I, Ed's passed away uh, not so long ago, but Ed was a friend. And, yeah. You know, I should have asked him when I could have had right. the chance. Hey, yeah. I have to take this to the grave. Do you have a I treasure map that can tell us where the bodies are? <laughs> Did you really write NT? Would you like looking over Dave Cutler's shoulder and say, you know what would be great? <laughs> <laughs> what if yeah. you put... We're going to hear from Dave Cutler now. You watch. Yeah, okay. Dave oh. Cutler. He didn't like that, huh? No, he wouldn't like I, that. I don't, no. think, I don't think he had any help. No. Well, I mean, he had he wrote, lots of help. No, he didn't have no. any help. He wrote the whole thing <laughs> in, his, in his garage. It is. Yeah. <laughs> That's how it was done. <laughs> I wrote it in that quick guy. basic. That's why it was so slow. <laughs> <laughs> There's a proof of concept. Um, yeah. Microsoft is, uh, oh, now you had the layoff story. Do we, we didn't even mention that yet. Is that happening? Yeah. What's the deal with that? So, you know, at the, we talked about this last week. At the start of Microsoft's fiscal, new fiscal, which was July 1, there's always reorgs. There's always some layoffs, right? Um we know that there was a big sales 
reorg. I, I wrote some details about this on my site this week, and they are creating a new separate consulting arm at Microsoft. And as part of this whole moving everybody around, some salespeople are going to be let go. Some marketing people are going to be let go. And other people in other divisions, you know, there's always some attrition at this time of year. But I'm still not hearing it's a lot it's people. not, yeah, mass layoffs. I, I heard from a friend about some layoffs in the Azure group even. Um, but yeah. I, I, this is not the year to be laying off a lot of people when I you're know. a big tech company. Right. Uh, and Microsoft just did the right thing with all their retail employees. It'd be kind of an awkward thing uh, to pull those guys right. into the fold and lay off a bunch of other people. So okay. there's always going to be some because of the time of year. Yeah. Uh, they are laying bet, off um, MSN editors. GeekWire has <clears> more on that this week. You yeah. Remember, they, there was news they about said they that. They were going to do like, that. They were going to go away from humans entirely. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. they are doing that and laying off some of those people. But from what I what I heard um, this week, a number I don't know if everybody is being offered a chance to try to find another job in the company, but some people are. So mm -hmm. yeah, there are layoffs, and I'm not saying that's great or like oh, there's only a few, so it's fine. I'm not saying that, but. It's no, better no, than no. it was a couple of years ago. Yeah, Remember, no, they were like, the lightest, the yeah, this is probably the lightest year we've seen in years. Yeah. For yep. this kind of thing, for sure. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, no, there was, there, there have be been some devastating lives. There may be like hundreds yeah. total across the company, which is not small, but comparatively, so again, it's not. What are they doing at What do they do? Take all the um, the robots that used to build cars because they don't have jobs anymore, and now they're, they're doing news at MSN? Is that yeah. what's happening? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody has to, right? I guess so, yeah. Maybe that creepy chat pot will be doing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so boy. yeah, this this was very interesting to me too. So in China, Microsoft has this chat bot. It's called Chow Ice, which is which is a rough tr roughly translated little Bing. So this is their good oh, chat box. That's good. This was not Tay, <laughs> right? This wasn't the one that was doing the racist comments. Right. This is the one in China that was very, very successful. Little Bing. Um, they love them. Little Bing. Yep. yep. Um, they're sp so Microsoft is spinning off the work that they've been doing with Chow Ice and creating a separate company. Um, and, mm. But they're going to invest in the company. And this company is going to create commercial products. It doesn't really say what, but... Uh, going to create commercial products using this Microsoft social chatbot as part of the technology inside. Is it going to be Chow uh, Ice Ice Baby? Yeah. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> Gripping it in his 5.0. Yeah. yeah. It's just, it was interesting because we hadn't heard anything on Chow Ice in a while. And then suddenly it's like, oh, they're spinning it out. You know, maybe, maybe to save money. I don't know. Or maybe... Because it's, you know, at when it was the end of the fiscal year and Amy Hood was going through the list, like, oh, do we need this? No. Chop. <laughs> right. Off. Yeah. I don't know. Interesting. It's just kind of odd to hear hear that name again. Chow, Chow Ice, by the way, was doing a lot of things way before, well, and things that Cortana still can't do, like the du full duplex conversation where you say something to it and then it responds and you have like mm -hmm. a semi-normal conversation with it. That already exists in that technology, but has not made hmm. it into Cortana. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and I think a little Xbox would be yeah, nice. Very we little, have an event coming up, don't we? Or do we already have that? Yeah, next uh, Thursday, maybe. To get up early, yeah, game? like 7 a.m. Yeah. on Thursday. Oh, good. Oy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What yeah. should well, I be, be looking good. for? Anything exciting? You're joining me, aren't you, Paul? I think so. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. I think we talked about doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's when is, uh, this is going to be? Uh, Sorry. What, this is like you want to join us, preview. Mary Jo? You could do no, it. It's so much Xbox. fun. We'd have Mary Jo Foley in it. No. When is well, it though? She, I just am trying to look at my calendar. I believe it's. I believe it's next Thursday. Yeah, week from oh, no. Thursday. Week from no. tomorrow. Is that right? No. No. no? Yeah. It's twenty third at seven a.m. Seven a.m. My time. Ten a.m. I'm gonna. Let, I'm going to let the professionals handle this one. Oh, but it'd be fun. You could just say, that looks stupid. <laughs> That's dumb. <laughs> right. Why would you want to do that? There'll, there's going to be some Halo. Do people actually play this game? It'd be fun. Yeah. 
No, guys, I'm leaving. I'm leaving it in your capable I'll gaming leave it with hands. You dateless wonders. Get a life. <laughs> get outside and get some fresh air. It'd be it'd be yeah. really fun if you were doing that. It'd be really fun. Sure. No. All right. I tried. Good try. It's, uh, you know, I'm all about the programming. I. I mean, they. Have, this is a big thing for them because the Sony event. Uh, they showed off a bunch of games, and now this is Microsoft's right, this chance, is chance to. Yeah. And you know, Halo. I think will be front and center. Halo. What's it called? Yeah. Infinite, maybe. Halo, yeah. The next yeah. game. Anything else that we should be looking for? Um, well, Microsoft uh, in the build-up to this has been doing a series of blog posts where they kind of highlight individual pieces of tech in the Xbox Series X. Um, the most recent one, which was yesterday probably, uh, dealt with the storage tech. And this is actually kind of interesting because most people seem to believe that the Xbox is a little more powerful than the PlayStation 5 for the most part. Spec-wise, it kind of looks that way, yeah. Yeah. But I don't know if that's going to be in real world, you know? Yeah, I, real world is, I'm sure they're, they're yeah. going to be very comparable. But, but Sony has been touting this kind of uh, super fast SSD that they have in the PlayStation 5. Right. It's supposed to be faster than anything you get in a PC or whatever. It's supposed to be incredible. Um, so Microsoft talked up this week what they're doing for storage. And, of course, it's 3,000 you know, words of gobbledygook. But what it basically amounts to is... Super fast SSD, you know, it's a NVMe SSD, which is what you get in really high end, uh, you know, laptops and so forth. Um, 2.4 gigabit per second of RAR IO throughput, which is over 40 times th the throughput of the original Xbox One, which is, you know, that was a hard drive. So, of course, it is. I mean, but that's important because, you know, as games get bigger and bigger and more and more streaming and you're, you know, racing more stuff through the drive. Uh, you don't want a 4,800 RPM hard <laughs> drive hold up no, to work. No, you back, don't. You know? That's true. Yeah. So this, you know, I mean, I overall, I think the um, the system itself is obviously very powerful. I think the the storage, the storage. I will say, for whatever reason, Xbox 360, this was the case. Original Xbox One, it was absolutely the case. Storage has always been kind of the weak link on the Xbox side, and it seems like with this one, finally, they're like, all right, look, we're going for broke on this one. We're, because, you know, again, you got you got to look out year. The, it might be, Whatever they do might be fine year one. you got to look right. out year eight. Right. You know, the, this thing has to has to be future-proof, and um, I think they, it looks like they're doing the right thing with it. So. Although I always just added an external drive, and everything was fine. Well, that was, yeah, depending on the Xbox, uh, a USB 3, I think it was, maybe it was the original Xbox One, a uh, USB 3 external hard drive was faster than right. the internal drive. Right. That's stupid. I mean, it's just stupid. It shouldn't be that way. No, NVMe is no, the right yeah, way to that go. Means, and that's because yeah. stuff, stuff, this stuff has dropped in price. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's competitive now and it lasts a long time. There's no, you know, initially there might have been some concern, <laughs> oh, these are going to wear out. But I think we know right. now not. Yeah, and it, I mean, I w presumably within the lifetime of this device, there'll be a lot of game streaming going on as well, and yeah, we'll see. I just bought it a uh, a uh, enclosure, a Thunderbolt three enclosure for my system at home that holds four NVMe drives, M.2 NVMe drives in it. Yeah. So it's four terabytes. So of the enclosure is like SSD. this. It's like the size. Yeah, of a it's not very big. Thing, right? Yeah, it's a you little know, box. Those things are tight. They're like sticks of gum. Mostly you know, the space tiny. is cooling, the fan. Yeah, that's funny. Um, but it's it's so nice because it's Thunderbolt three, and I you know USB four will be this way too. It's forty gigabytes right. per second. That's awesome. really good. You know that's yep. that's, that's as fast as, as anything on the bus. Yeah. It's PCIe yep. speed. So that's uh, yeah. I, there's no reason you're that of all things your game machine should totally have that, right? All right. All right. Let's uh, we're gonna get to the uh, back of the book here in just a second. Unless there's anything else, did we get it all? Yeah, I mean there was a I didn't even mention there was a Game Pass announcement just about the second half of July. There was nothing exceptional in there, so I didn't even mention it. But if you are a Game Pass subscriber, there are new games coming over the next two half weeks, whatever it is. So. Well, nothing, in that case, struck my fancy. I think it would be a good time for me mm -hmm. to pat talk about going to the doctor. Now, wait a minute, guys. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Every, every, yeah, every guy I know goes, no, not me. Uh -uh. Who? What? Doctor? No. I'm fine. I'm fine. No problems here. Fit as a fiddle, right as rain. I'll just walk it off. I'll rub some dirt in it. It'll be okay. 
But that's uh, that's how guys are. That's why Roman had to be invented. And thank goodness it did. It's essentially a digital health clinic for guys. And all the things that ail us. They have both over-the-counter and prescription medications. You'll get to see a real doctor licensed in the U.S. Um, anyone who's dealt with... I'll give you an example. Now, don't... Now, don't... This is, a, this is a, you know, perfect example. Erectile dysfunction. A, a bunch of guys just turned off. Just, nope, not going to talk about it. Don't want to hear about it. But why would you suffer? Look, I understand you. You know, you don't want to talk about it. Maybe you know you're certainly not going to tell your buddies because they'll they'll rib you endlessly for the rest of your life. And that's how that's why men don't know. It's very common all the time, even among young men. In fact, that's how Roman was started. A young guy whose father was a doctor and was having problems in the sack, and uh, he goes he could talk to his dad. They had a good relationship. Dad says, you know, that's in your age, that's serious. They did a workup. He had heart. He had undiagnosed heart disease. He had surgeries. He's lucky. He had his dad there. But a lot of guys would have just said, yeah, grin and bear it, you know. Oh, it happens, that kind of thing. Um, no, this is why you should see a doctor. And nowadays, telemedicine is the best way to do it. You don't have to leave the house. There's a simple, convenient way to get the treatment you need, whatever the situation is, without leaving your couch. That's because these great guys at Roman have been building a digital platform to connect you with a doctor, a real physician, an MD, licensed in your state, without leaving the house. It's a digital health clinic for men. You'll get discreet, professional care. No one's going to smirk or snicker or... You know, give you a nickname. No, you can get a genuine prescription medication or over-the-counter treatment, depending on what is appropriate, delivered in unmarked packaging. They do everything, not just sexual health like ED, but hair, skin, dandruff, eczema, daily health, prostate health, bone health. I'm actually, they have a testosterone supplement. As you get older, your testosterone declines. I've been taking that. It's made. I feel great. It's really, really great. Over the, that's over the counter. Roman makes it easy and affordable to get the treatment you need right from your house. Grab your phone, grab your computer. You'll complete a free online visit. And then you'll hear back from a U.S. licensed physician within 24 hours. And if the doctor, and by the way, this is the most important part. This is the most, this is where you're going to get treatment, the treatment you need. If the doctor decides a certain treatment is right for you, he or she can prescribe it and ship it directly to you with free two-day shipping. You also get free unlimited follow-ups with your doctor anytime you have a question or want to adjust your treatment. I mean, this is something we've needed. We guys have needed, especially for a long, long time. With Roman, there are no commitments. You can cancel anytime. If you're struggling with ED, no need to be embarrassed or suffer. Stay home and go to GetRoman.com slash Windows. GetRoman.com slash Windows. Free online visit. Free two-day shipping. Kind thoughtful, nurturing care from a real physician. It's really what we need, and there's no stigma. GetRoman.com slash Windows. Free online visit, free two-day shipping. I think it's the best thing ever. Highly recommend it. GetRoman.com slash Windows. Time for the back of the book, Paul Therat's tip of the week. Oh, making me follow that. I'm All right, sorry. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> this does not imply an endorsement by Paul Therott in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> right. right. Uh, if you're having one drive fetch dysfunction, <laughs> we have. A, so. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yep. It's uh, it's it happens to all of us. Yes. Um, no need yeah, to suffer. So Microsoft. <laughs> There's a feature of OneDrive that a lot of people probably don't know about called Fetch. And what happens is you, you enable it on your computer in, in OneDrive. And when you go to the web, you can actually navigate the file system of that computer from the web interface. So, you, you know, in other words, you could have it on at home, go to work, bring up the website, navigate to that PC in the OneDrive web interface, and, and not just see what you have in OneDrive, but see anything on the file system, including, in some cases, even network shares. So it's kind of, you know, obviously useful. The reason it existed was so that people could access files that they weren't syncing with OneDrive, right? When you think about how most people probably do that, they must have files in on their desktop maybe or in their documents folder or something like that. 
Um, so why are they getting rid of it? Um, we don't know why. Actually, Microsoft hasn't said why, but uh, there is a replacement for it that they're not really touting enough. And it's another feature that's part of OneDrive, which is just called backup. So if you right click on the little cloud icon for OneDrive in your tray and go to settings and then go to backup, you'll see that there is a manage backup interface, which actually when you first set up OneDrive on a computer now, you'll actually see this. And what it is asking you to do is backup your desktop documents and pictures folders to OneDrive. So these are folders that exist outside of OneDrive. And this is a, another way, the new way, that you can access other files on your computer. Not every single file, right? It's not every single location, but in the most often used places where they might be. So if you're upset about fetch going away, <clears throat> first of all, if files are important, you should not be putting them on a computer in a place where they're only on that computer, <laughs> right? I mean, just as kind of a matter of course. But if you're the type of person that works you know, on your desktop, maybe uses scratch space, whatever, um, th at least do this. You can back it up. And that way, when you're off on a different computer, you're out in the world somewhere, you'll always be able to access those things um, through the, uh, the web interface on OneDrive. So good. that's the solution to that little problem. Yay. <clears throat> and then app pick. I actually have uh, three app picks uh, today. It's been kind of a weird week like that. But um, Stardock released Curtains, right? So this is a lot of people think of this as the new window blinds. What Curtains is is a window blinds like program that takes advantage of the technology that Microsoft built into Windows 10 when they started adding support for dark mode. And what that means is it allows you to change the UI. Oh. But it works it works much more reliably because it's it's you taking advantage of an underlying Windows 10 feature. So for example, like one of the things they have uh, themes that look like um, uh, like Windows XP, Windows 95, you know, things like that. Honestly, like they're so clean looking and beautiful. Like I actually really like the Windows XP theme for now. I'll probably get tired of it again, but it's kind of that green and blue UI from 2001 or whatever. And they have modern themes, you know, that look like um, that have names, you know, based on fluent and other nonsense words that Microsoft uses to describe the UI. But it's really nice. Like this is really, really nice. And so it's it's $10 as a standalone program or you get it as part of Object Desktop. Um, this, this is a really good one. Um I think I mentioned this last week, but Halo 2 is, as of today or yesterday, now available on the PC. And that Ooh. means you can get it through Xbox, right, in the Microsoft Store. You can get it through Steam if you're a Steam gamer. Um, it's $9.99 for the standalone game, or you get it as part of the Master Chief Collection. So as of today, they have remastered, and it's 4K, 60 frames a second. Wow. Uh, Halo Reach, Halo Combat Evolved, Halo 2, and now Halo 3. So Halo 3 ODST will be next, and then Halo 4, and I think that might wrap it up. I think that might be everything. That's so, pretty and good, then, and, and that's, uh, you know, the collection's only 40 bucks. so. I know. No, that's a good it's, thing, you know? Halo's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. I, I, I should say, when I say Halo, I, I really mean Halo 1, 2, and 3, and actually ODST I remember liking quite a bit, although I have not looked What's at that, that recently. What's that Yes, it's like off, <laughs> it's drop, uh, drop special, it's like, it's something to do with, it's like the soldiers that drop from space, drop, it's like drop guys, yeah. off planet, drop something, I, yeah. I can't remember that, it's, it's, it's the other guys that were on the, the, like the other guys who were like Master Chief, like, right, the, right, whatever, something like that, special forces <clears throat> for the future, <laughs> yeah, someone out there will know, ODST, yeah. It was cut. It was a side. The ODST um, takes pl is a single player campaign that takes place at the same time as the events in Halo Three. Ah, so it's a team of people dropping down to the planet. You know, right? Finishing the fight. Back when Halo was supposed to be a trilogy, but now there are uh, a lot of games. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, and then side yeah. games and all kinds of stuff. Um, and it also, and uh, this was <laughs> announced in the middle of that bizarre blog post about the latest Windows Insider build, but the Microsoft launcher, which is the uh, Android launcher that Microsoft makes, is out in a big new version. So this is the version that used, it's version six, but this was the thing they were testing through a preview version of the app. And it's supposed to be kind of an early peek at what we expect the Surface Duo UI to look like. So I, I this just happened before the show. I haven't had a chance to look at this. I, I have looked at, you know, the preview version, but it was months ago. Uh, but if you have are you know, using Microsoft Launcher and Launcher and you will and you upgrade it, uh, you'll get version six, which is a, a big new version of the app. 
of cool. the launcher. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yes, Time yes, yes. For our enterprise pick of the week, Mary Jo Foley. Yes. So part of the reason I can't do your gaming show with you next week yes. is there are a lot of things happening with Microsoft next week. And one of the bigger ones is, well, they're having earnings next Wednesday. Oh, that's that's right. their yeah. Q4 earnings. Yeah. And then they on Monday, Tuesday, no, sorry, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, it's the Microsoft Inspire Partner Conference, which is their annual worldwide event, usually in person this year. It's digital only. And Inspire is for partners, but typically there are a lot of uh, product announcements and strategy announcements also during Inspire. And I'm not sure if everybody is going to be able to watch the keynotes. I know we are as press uh, and the partners will obviously, but on day one, there's going to be a lot of partner announcements. So that's Tuesday. Um, you know, they're having their partner leaders talk to the partners about new programs and such. But day two is Satya Nadella and other Microsoft execs, including Julia White, who is the head of marketing for Azure, and Alyssa Taylor, who heads up a big chunk of, of the Dynamics 365 business. So I'm expecting there's going to be a lot of product news next week that hopefully we'll be able to talk about to some degree on Windows Weekly. Uh, and it won't all be saved up for day two. But um yeah, Inspire is next week, and I'm just telling people that. So if the keynotes are open and you care about watching those, they're always very interesting. You get kind of a really good gl overview and glimpse of the different Microsoft businesses when you watch that because Microsoft is explaining to their partners, <coughs> here's what we're going to do going forward <coughs> in terms of products and strategy. So, yeah, watch for us. Paul and I will be writing about this, and we'll be talking about the keynotes, I'm sure, on Twitter. Um, and if if they are open to the public, I'll make sure to tweet yeah, let me links know. where you can get them. Because maybe we'll yeah. want to stream it. Yeah. What day is yeah, that? Yeah, day two. So day two is Wednesday, um, okay. next Wednesday, and that's when Satya Nadella and Brad Smith and the and the Azure and Dynamics and Office three sixty five people are all speaking right. um, during that day two keynote. So what, uh, so yeah. that's during our show. Are you going to be? No, so we're, we'll. I think we'll be knowing about some of this news under under agreements. I'm guessing uh, beforehand. Okay. We don't know anything yet, but yeah, hopefully we will. <laughs> All right. So let me know if we should maybe uh, cut away to anything. Cut away. Yeah, I guess we could do that. If it's during, what time is? Do you know what time the keynote is? Yeah. Let me see. I know on the schedule here. Um, I think because it's virtual, they're rebroadcasting it in multiple time oh, zones so and multiple really segments. Okay. Right. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. um, it's, uh, let's see, Pacific time. Pacific time, it's at 8 a.m., 9, 10, 11. So it'll 11 be over. a.m. Oh, 11 Yeah, we'll already have seen it. Yeah. Okay, so you'll have seen it. 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 a.m. Eight a.m. Pacific. Yes, yeah, so it'll be Wednesday. over. And then yep. uh, you can report on it on the show. We can. Yeah, okay. we can. All right, next week. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. And as a, as we mentioned, 7 a.m. The, the 23rd, the following day, we have the yep. Xbox reveal, and uh, Paul and I will be uh, hosting that. It's going to be a busy yep. week. Shoosh. Earnings, yeah. Inspire, Xbox. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And yep. uh, you have a code name pick of the week. We do. Thanks to the walking cat. This is a new code name. It's Project Port Mar Marion. M E I R I O N. Oh, that's so funny because I have some china in the yes. Port Marion pattern. It's a pattern, right? I because yes. when I was looking this up, it's a china pattern. It's yes. also a village in Wales. <laughs> Probably where they make Port Marion. Probably. Yeah. And what it is in terms of Microsoft is it seems to be a part of their confidential computing strategy. So the way they describe it is Project Port Marion is a way to explore hardware software co-design for security in Azure's general purpose compute stack. And it says they're working with major CPU vendors and academic institutions on this. So strange. What does it have to do I know. with China? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm guessing it has to do with Wales because Wales? you know how they love, yeah. they love geographic right. code names. Maybe that's um, what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But this is all about, it says here, we are actively collaborating with ARM as one of the partners. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So this is all about um, improving the overall security 
from an end-to-end perspective, right? Hardware to software, they're co-designing it right into the Azure Compute stack. Right. So it, right now it's a research project, but I think we could expect to see some of the technology from this showing up in Azure probably in the not-too-distant future. By the way, Paul, uh, Karsten, mm -hmm. of course, knows the answer. It stands for Orbital Drop Shock Troopers. Shock Troopers. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know if he looked it up or he just knew it off the top of his head. I bet he just knew it off I the top of his right. head. And now it's time for beer. Beer yes, me, so, Mary Jo. Yes, this is a very unusual beer. This is a beer for people who think they don't like beer. Okay, um, okay, that's me. It's called The Bright, B-R-I-T-E, Hibiscus Lime. Ooh. So if you like hibiscus and lime and you like the idea of a fizzy, sparkling kind of I'm almost sorry. like a... It's it's like, like hibiscus. It's, it's, like Bud, it's like Budweiser lime for people who don't like beer. What, no, what no. is hibiscus? It's, <laughs> it's, hibiscus it's, actually has a taste. It it's does. It's a beautiful red flower. It gives it a pink color, but yeah. it, there's also a weird taste to it. I don't know. I've had hibiscus beers and I'm like, there's something... Paul, have you ever had tea. red zinger tea? Yeah. That's, that's hibiscus. A, that's the taste right there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, it's so yeah, they, rich in vitamin C. Although I doubt this beer is. I wouldn't recommend uh, it as a vitamin C supplement. Probably not. <laughs> probably not. But it's only seventy-five calories, oh, and it's wow. sparkling. Oh, that's it's great. sparkling and tangy, and it tastes. I'm not kidding you. Like a wine cooler or a juice spritzer or something like that. They call it a sour blonde ale. It's from the brewery, which is a very famous craft beer brewery. They have a part of it called the Brewery Terror, which is in Anaheim. And they make a lot of kind of different sours and kind of specialty beers there. Uh, this one, I when I had it, I'm like, wow, I would never even think that was a beer. But I, I would say I, I gave it to one of my friends and she said, wow, I love this. And I'm like, yeah, because it doesn't really taste like a beer. And she said, yeah. So it's it's a beer for introducing people to sours. It's not super sour. It's just very kind of light and effervescent, I would say. Ah. Uh, it actually You're sounds quite good. It's very interesting and very very much worth a try for a summer beer. It almost sure. doesn't seem like a beer. You know, like a It doesn't. Uh, it seems totally like, like a sprite. wine cooler or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> It's a yeah. spritz. It's a spritzer. a spritzer. It's like a spritzer. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be, uh, yeah, it's a cooler. Actually, really, yeah, I really like um, sours. So. Oh, you would probably really I'd like probably this. I'd probably like it, yeah. Yep. yep. And I like uh, Red Zinger tea. I bet you would I very really much like scotch. Like this. I like it. <laughs> 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 I want to get drunk. Would I like this beer? Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking to get hammered. Is this a good choice? <laughs> yeah, not for getting hammered, no. <laughs> get, get hammered. I love that. There are hibiscus whiskey sours, according to Virgil, so uh, maybe that'd be more to your liking, Mr. Therat. <laughs> I'm tired today. <clears throat> when <laughs> when I, I was up at 6 a.m. doing Pilates. Yeah. Don't look at me. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, wow. boy. I got my... Um, I got my um, I'm very excited about this. Let me put this on for you. and uh, don't, be, don't be afraid. It was this just like machine they, uh, printed? What they call a mask fitter. They finally came. These are based on a 3D model of my face. Right. And the idea is, I mean, normally it, this wouldn't protect you against anything. But you know, if you put the mask material underneath it, yep. it, it seals it around your face like that. Could you put the mask over it to keep it from like Because it's pretty ugly? Your, no, no. Because you know when you're breathing and it's really hot and the mask sticks to your mouth and stuff? Ew, I don't, I don't like know that. if you have that problem. Well, see, that's, what, happens, see. that's why this <laughs> has this little Hannibal Lecter yeah. tooth protruber. I know. So I'll show you the, in the close-up. I'd like to put my mask over that to yeah. keep it easier breathing. Yeah, this has a little... So that's the whole idea of this. You might like this, Mary Jo. The whole idea of this mm -hmm. is this is your nose, right? And the, this, right. you put the material in this Jeez. grip it's and like then it holds piranha. it away from your face. Yeah, it's like a little piranha. Wow. So the cool thing is this is generated by a, a 3D program. Yeah. On I showed you this, right? And then... Yeah, yeah. yeah and and you those, can so, get a picture of your face, Yes. Right? And so it, and it yep. generated it. And then I sent this off to a, a, actually a place, the dental, uh, they print, print dental stuff, uh, 3D printers. Cadmus Dental yeah. uh, in uh, Arlington, Texas, and uh, so they print they printed it out. And I have this is the this is the fancy one with the with the little Hannibal Lecter teeth, and then this is the one 
with that. But I, th I agree with you, Mary Jo. I think something that pulls it away from the face. Yeah, yeah it's it would like be when you very get those, um, yeah. The eye, the sleep masks that have little bulbs, so your it doesn't press against your eye. Right. Yeah. Like yes. it kind of bulbs out from it. Yeah, I, I don't know. like the ones that where you if you blink, yeah. your eyes. You don't want the flat kind. No, you can this. feel it no. like on your eye. Yeah. That's awful. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah. yeah. I have ordered. <laughs> Jammer V and I have ordered a Kickstarter that is a battery powered mask that has UVC lights in it and a fan, <laughs> and it sucks oh, the wow. air in, purifies it before you breathe it. Uh, wow. We'll see. Does it still do the job of a mask, though? Yeah, that's the whole point of it. It's yeah. like sterile yeah. air coming into your mouth. But how does and how I, does the air go out? Uh, same same way. So it's through it, your ears. ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you can't breathe that. It's only you get used to it. <laughs> it's only yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, we do this show every Wednesday, around about 11 a.m. Pacific. That's 2 p.m. Eastern time, right after Floss Weekly. Be, uh, let's see, 11 a.m. be about 1800 UTC. If you want to tune in, uh, you can go to twit.tv slash live. That's where we have all the different streams. There's video and audio. Pick the stream you want. Listen as we do the show. Or wait till we get the editors on it and they take out all the swear words, the cussing, the fighting, the screaming, the gnashing of yeah. teeth. And they put Mary it. Jo. Mary Jo. Mary <laughs> Joe. And then they, they clean that all up and they put that out. And that's only a couple of hours later. You can get that at <laughs> twit.tv slash WW. There's also a YouTube channel for all the Windows Weekly episodes, 681 of them. Uh, or best thing to do, subscribe, you know, just collect them automatically so it'll be there whenever you're in the mood. you got a minute or two to listen to Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is at therott.com. That's his blog. He also uh, publishes his books at LeanPub, leanpub.com, including the Field Guide to Windows 10, which is mm -hmm. now getting updated for 2004. So it's all very up-to-date. And you get that automatically if you uh, buy the book. So that's nice. Some great posters there on how to use Windows 10 and things. Mary Jo Foley uh, has no posters, but she does have a blog at allaboutmicrosoft.com where she <laughs> posts regularly. Uh, that's her ZDNet blog. And together they form the dynamic duo of Microsoft <laughs> journalists. Next week we'll be talking about Inspire and the quarterly results. We'll, oh, see, yes, if, yes, yes. we'll see if that... I uh, know. Oh, We'll have to guess on that because that'll be after. See how their oh, uh, lemonade stand did this quarter. Yeah, see how they, yeah, where they, how many nickels yeah. they got. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll yep. talk to you next week. Stay healthy on Windows Thank Weekly. Bye-bye. Hi, I'm Jason Howell, host of All About Android, where each week I'm joined by Ron Richards, Florence Ion, and a rotating crew of Android journalists, developers, and enthusiasts, where we talk about the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. You can subscribe by going to twit.tv slash AAA or find the show in your podcatcher of choice. That's All About Android.